Husky, yeah. how many <laughs> likes for Raid 3 to come out in a month's time? Give us a like, goal. <sighs> Like at least a thousand. No, I'm, I'm joking. Like, <laughs> no, 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 we're gonna cut it off right here. Video was two hundred. A thousand likes for raids <laughs> free next month. Let's go. Welcome to the OSRS podcast, where we talk to RuneScape content creators and J mods about RuneScape content. I am Mitmay Cal, one of your hosts. Followed by, I'm boys Rake as always, and it's me Rice Cup. So today we have a very special guest. This will be our second ever J mod, uh, being on this podcast, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mod Husky. He is a content developer for old school runescape so he's made or you know he's code made a lot of interesting things like the league stuff uh like the nightmare boss so yeah a lot of pvm and a lot of skilling related kind of contents and yeah he's really active on twitter as well so definitely one of the most well-known j mods uh, at the moment for sure welcome buddy glad to have you man hey pleasure to be here Yes, we got another J mod boys. Second yes. one. We're growing. <laughs> oh, yeah. The channel's blowing up, man. I I think if we get a third J mod, we got to hit like 300 likes on this videos. I, I think, nah, I think this I, e this uh, deserves 300. Man, we're we're, <laughs> we're scraping like I think the last podcast we did got like just over 200 likes. Yeah, Ooh, in the baby, yeah, we're, 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 we're making a comeback. Like bum boys, come on. Yeah, yeah, we're getting gotta, there. We're closing that. in. We're almost at it. Two Dude. seconds, you know. Boop. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, boys. Now, the, the podcast is growing. We're starting to get more uh, serious about it. We even brought someone who works for Gagex. And we're going to ask him a couple questions. I want to start. So, Dead Man Mode or Leagues? What is your favorite and why? <laughs> um, God, that's such a difficult question, right? And I think I've definitely got personal bias because I've worked on two leagues and I haven't worked in a Dead Man. So, Fair. I think I'm going to say, like, you know, I've... I I really love the two leagues that I've worked on, and I, as a player, because I think basically almost all the Dead Man content was before I joined as a J mod. I've been there for two years, right? And I didn't, I just didn't play the Dead Man stuff. Just you know, like I suck at PvP. Sorry guys, you know, and it's you know, hard. Maybe I, I've got, I've, I've done, uh, I've done LMS a little bit here and there, and I feel like I'm understanding, you know, the switching and tribrids and guessing and stuff. But I think, I think my answer to that would be I, I do like leagues more because I think the current iteration of Dead Man has just gotten a bit stale, if I'm being honest. Yeah, and, I agree. Uh, I 100% agree with that, man. I'm not even looking forward I, to Dead Man mode, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> man. I'm, well, the leagues is too good. Well, I think the thing that like keeps leagues interesting is, you know, it, I'm not going to say every league is going to be better than the last one, but at least you know it's going to be new and different, right? There's going to be some interesting twist or change to the way you play the game. And that gets people that gets people in. That gets people saying, hey, like, I'm gonna give this a shot, you know? And I think giving it a shot is the is the first big thing, right? You know, getting people interested. And I've been working on a dead man design actually. I tweeted about it. Um and it takes inspiration from leagues in the way of, hey, let's add a twist, right? Let's take the formula of Dead Man and do something different with it. And I think the biggest challenge with that has been you don't want it to not suddenly feel like Dead Man, right? Mm -hmm. It needs to still have a lot of the core things that Dead Man has, which is, you know, this, to me, at least when I was approaching the design, was very much, it needs to be, like, obviously player versus player. It's, I, I don't even want to say, like, clan experience or solo experience. It has a hybrid of both, like, in a way. But more more than anything, it's kind of like a spectacle, and it's that rise to watch to watch people, content creators, and your your friends, and all sort like rise to the top to see who's going to be the person who you know hmm. came up with the best strategies, or you know like in some cases had the best resources and support from clans and and PvP technical skill to get there. You know, I think it I think it really is about that. You know, I think that spectator experience is like core to Dead Man, right? Yeah, oh, you know. Agreed. I mean, and... even though it's super hard to stream, though, I mean, it's got to be one of the harder things in RuneScape to stream, but when you can, it definitely gets viewers. Uh, yeah. Does that mean I we mean... can expect, though, um, something a little newer for not only leagues, next leagues, but also Dead Man Mode? Is that what you're kind of bringing up as well? Hopefully. Um, I mean, we've kind of said it loosely in a few gazettes and on streams and definitely spoken about it internally. Is that, like, I think, like, good, like, the problem with Dead Man previously is it was so often you couldn't make changes. And I think that, like, I think de this Dead Man is probably going to come out a little bit later in the year than we would like. But I think that, like, the plan generally moving forward, if the community obviously support it and it does well, is to have 
dead men and leagues once a year each right and at separate times okay. so you've got like the you've got the pvp event and the i'm not gonna say pvm event i'm not gonna say skilling event it's kind of a weird hybrid of two for the runescape event pretty much right it's yeah. just everything but so, I, i'd that's... love to see that um with a twist as well and i think the only thing i'm actually worried about with my design is uh I'm worried that it's too much of a change in some areas. You know, it's it's kind of out there. And that also gets me excited because, I'm, you know, some people might turn around and say, I absolutely hate this design. Some people might say, I absolutely love it. But, I mean, it's, it's going to be different. Dude, for, in terms of demo <laughs> mode, I, I would say most change, especially if it's outside of the box, is going to be welcomed warmly. Because, uh, I, I mean personally i did quite a few of the demo mode tournaments and stuff and it, it really just was the same thing every time so if you're saying there's going to be changes i'm absolutely pumped for that um i don't the questions that i have for you are mainly like around pvp and demo mode which we can save for a little bit later on um so i think i'll just ask you a bit of a generic question which is um how long have you played runescape for and did you play runescape before you uh became a jmod Oh yeah. Uh so oh, yeah. I played I played RuneScape like as a kid, you know, back when I think we all played it. It was like uh how old would I have been? We're probably talking like 2002-ish. Ooh, early. Until Ooh. Un until probably like 2006, 2007-ish. I'm trying to remember. Now God Wars was definitely out. I'm trying to remember what the last big update was and I can't remember, but I did that thing that like a lot of people like did back then which was like defect to world of warcraft because that's all my friends did you know <laughs> uh, so yeah. th that became my main game for like you know later teenage years into like uh, like going into uni and stuff but you know I, I i had fond memories of playing the game and then you know i'm at i'm at uni and you know i've quit world of warcraft at this point and you know i hear about the, the old school runescape servers and i'm like oh that was fun that was a game i played when i was a kid let's let's give that a bash and i think i had the same thoughts a lot of people had back then which was like is this just going to be a fad is this going to be a thing that like bunch of people come to and then like it's going to die out and is it <laughs> worth putting all my time into this um for it to then just like not matter like because like the, there was kind of a dev team but not really and everyone was like uh so you know i, I played it for about four or five months and quit uh only to then i think it was like a year or so later i can't remember how long it was between release and me playing and, and then but uh, i heard about the iron man game mode right and to me oh, like yeah. it, it actually just got me excited because as a as a player i had that like thing i'm, I'm sure I, I don't know maybe you guys can relate maybe you can't but like as a kid it was like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna save up and i'm gonna buy darox and then i'm gonna do mole and i'm gonna camp mole and i'm gonna make like 100 million gp and then you get like 100 mole kills in in your board and you sell your darox and you made a loss on the set because because <laughs> you suddenly because you suddenly want to like buy guffins and afk train your melees right and then like you get bored of that and it was like a lot of like hopping around and like selling stuff and changing goals i think the iron man game mode really like it captured the things that i loved about like playing games like world of warcraft about this like the gear you need to go and get it yourself like Escape is a very interesting game and all the gear is viable, right? How many games out there is that a thing? Like, there might be a few viable pieces, but it's usually go out, kill the boss, get the loot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So to me, it just captured that part I like and the idea of progressing through. And I didn't think I would love it as much as I did. And I just kind of didn't stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, think anyone does. Yep. <laughs> uh and before yep. i knew it i was like getting really interested in the game and i was like oh you know i i i want to learn more about it get the news post find out there's live streams tune into live streams and you're watching these guys on the couch and you know at this point i'm doing a degree in computer science and i'm like god th these guys just seem really awesome like as a team to work on they're talking and out to the players and you never see a dev team do that like ever to the extent they do and i'm like more so than wanting to work on the game. I was like, I want to work with these people because they seem awesome. And like, like this just seems like a really fun thing to do. Uh, so graduate from uni, applied for the job. Didn't think I would get it. Um, and, you know, I got an interview and actually I didn't get it the first time around. Uh, <laughs> I oh. failed the interview process. Oh, man. Got a job working in oil and gas and then another job position opened up like a Jagex. And I was like, you know what? Like, I may have failed once, but, you know, YOLO, you know, might as don't get it if you don't try and i managed to get it the second time and i think the first time i was very like um very much like overwhelmed i suppose you know i was like oh my god there's like kira and there's ash and blah blah and the second yeah. time i was like second time when i went to the office i was like let's get let, let's get shit done you know i was like yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I know That's i could do good. this 
glasses, you know, the shades. Bro, let's do it. Um, yes, sir. What kind of questions? What kind of questions do they ask you when you become a J mod? Because I, I can't remember if this is something I heard like as a theory or if it was from a J mod, but regarding like what would you change in the game or something like that? Do they have a list of set questions regarding your, like your game knowledge? Uh, yeah, kind of. It's it's kind of a two part thing, and I've been asked this a lot. Where it's like, how much does game knowledge matter? Like how, how when applying for a job? Um, and I think no matter what role you apply, Jagex, game knowledge is it's going to be more important than for some other games, just because this game has such a long legacy. Do you know what I mean? And history. And I think the game knowledge helps, but um, as far as like when it comes to especially coding and like content development, there's a mix between you probably don't want someone who has knows literally everything about the game could recite all the lore and what every item does and can't code like to save themselves. They probably don't want them for a content developer position, maybe in like community management or like QA perhaps, right? Um, yeah, that sort of thing. But at the same time, you could have someone who's like a phenomenal coder but knows nothing about the game, right? And you probably want a mix between them. And we've got people in the team across like a broad range of spectrums in that, right? And that that's probably a good thing as well. Um, I mean, I got asked about my game knowledge and I it wasn't much of a question. It was, you know, like, where are you game? Do you play? And at the time I applied for the job, I was... My Iron Man was like grinding an SGS to go for the Inferno. And I was like 2100 total at the time, right? So that was uh -oh. kind of the answer I gave. But it wasn't like instant. It wasn't like right a major <laughs> thing. No, it it wasn't though, right? Because I failed the job the first time. You know. Oh, did you tell him that the first time? Because... Really? And that's because yeah, he, told... he didn't even have the for the time. Bro, he has an was. SGS on an Iron Man. Hire the man. I what? <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so, but the, but that's the thing, you. right? I I I bombed the practical the first time. I made some stupid mistakes in coding that i was like yeah that was that was really bad i shouldn't have done that and then like the second time i i did the coding got it better and i think you you honestly want a candidate especially for development that's good at both or like a good mix of both um yeah and regardless like who would like you review you monash it was, yeah, it was actually and it was it was monash <laughs> it, it was yeah. monash and i didn't do bad and i think as well like Looking back at it now, like, because I've done a few, like, interviews with people and stuff, what you kind of look for, especially in this, is, uh, do they know the game is, like, obviously, like, a good, it's more like a check mark than, like, a score out of 100, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to be like, oh, this guy knows the game, like, he's maxed, and that's way more valuable than someone who's, like, you know, 1800 total and knows the game. It's just kind of, like, cool, they have, they have good game knowledge or they don't have good game knowledge, right? And then you, you rate their coding ability more, like, granular but like more important almost than anything is if they're great at the not game knowledge they're fantastic at coding but you just get bad vibes from them in the team sort of meetings you know like you're like oh, this 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 person seems like just a little weird and strange and they're not answering the right questions that's gonna that's gonna matter more right you know like you want a good team fit and yeah. sometimes those team questions are just like us kind of like you know, and asking like random, random stuff that comes to mind, just seeing how the answer, right? Um, and I remember Mod Flippy's interview when I was on the team, and like he said, he got dug himself into a rabbit hole of talking about the things he could fix with Fletching or something like that. It was like nobody cares. There's not even any problems with Fletching, but because he was actually <laughs> engaging in that conversation in an actual meaningful way and coming up with like cool design problems and stuff, it was like. You're like, oh, this guy actually seems really cool, and he can definitely think and talk through a problem, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that matters. Uh, he had know? passion. I yeah. just love the fact that he tried to talk his way into a JMod position by saying that Fletching needs updates. That's <laughs> fire. That's such a good. Well, that's a fire strategy right there, man. <laughs> Uh, I mean, to be honest, some of the points he raised weren't that bad. You know, it yeah. was like, you know, crafting has like lots of different things you can do with it. But fletching is quite literally just ammunition and bows. I know that's like quite literally the definition of fletching. But he was talking about, you know, better, more interesting ways we could go about fletching. I can't even remember what he said, but I think that was kind of the point. It wasn't what he said that was important. It was the way he was holding the conversation and the fact he was mm. willing to bounce ideas off. And, you know, like, I think that's what I value a lot. Like, I, I don't want someone in a team who's just going to turn around and to me and say i'll be like hey what do you think of this like, that's shit don't do it i want someone who goes like and builds on the idea and makes it better because like really development works like a super creative process right and there's yeah. no rights or wrongs but there are definitely goods and bads <laughs> oh yeah you, know? you want someone to run with your design and even if it's stupid you can you can turn 
what sounds like a stupid idea at first into a great idea just by getting inspired, right? Yeah, no, I agree. Definitely. You know? Dude, um, so something that we do talk about a fair bit on the podcast is um, the polling system, okay? Oh. And uh, I was curious, <laughs> like, touching on what you just said there, I'd be very... <laughs> hey, we, we were told we could ask anything, and I respect that a lot. If you, you can't I just answer, thought that's absolutely fine. I just thought that would be Rice's question. <laughs> I'll answer man. anything. <laughs> but, nah. like, so, I, I've, always, I've always tried to put myself in, like, the, the shoes of UJ mods, because... I've always viewed it in a way where I'm just like, I, I genuinely feel bad for you guys because as a creative person, you might have the most amazing idea, like yeah, Flippy with the uh, the fletching idea, but it's like, you could come up with the best idea, you could be super passionate about it, and then it gets 74% on the, on the polls, right? And I've always felt kind of bad because I feel like that cripples creation. And I was just curious, if you're allowed to talk about it, how yourself and maybe how other JMods view the polling system and whether you think that it's needed now in 2021 or whether it should be lowered, taken away. Like, what's your view on it and Jagex as a whole? Sure. So maybe just I think view. the first thing I want to... <laughs> yeah, I think that's the first thing I actually want to touch on is... And I kind of said this a bit in the, in the pre-show, but it's worth reiterating just for the viewers and watchers. Is that, like, we have, like, a team of, like, approaching 60 folk in the old school team, right? Wow. And not all of them are people who... You know, you see the list at the bottom of the news post growing. Not all of those are going to be people who are, like, you know, super game knowledge and, like, creating stuff and on the front lines. There's going to be, like, managers and production and, you know, people who are just literally there to ensure that we could complete the work that we say we're going to get done in in like our two week set, like we call them sprints like a two week period of work we do and you know to help us address issues that we have and all this stuff but what i'm trying to get at is that like even amongst like the people who like you know counting all the qa all the cms all the devs the people who like generally contribute more to like um what actually goes out in the game there's still like you know 20 ish people maybe 25 I, I don't even know the number off the top of my head so like when it's my opinion on something it's literally just one person in a team of 15 to 20, right? And I have people all the time tell me uh, that's, a, that, that's a pretty terrible idea, at Husky, you know, like, like I'd, I'd point out the problems and, you know, like we'll, we'll, we'll bounce off and, you know, give criticism and stuff. And I think that's just what I was kind of trying to like, preface. Like anything I say is like, that's my opinion. And it might just be a terrible take. And that's why we're a team because people will tell me when I've got yeah. a terrible take. <laughs> so it's the best. That'll, yeah. All that, like, aside, like, talking about polling, it's a super interesting topic. And I think it's, I think nobody internally is going to disagree that right now it's kind of, like, maybe not polling per se, but, like, at least the fact that we are so engaging in our community is, like, what we want to be, like, a core pillar of our game. You know, so few JMods, like, as I mentioned earlier, like, actually, or not like JMods, but, like, like, developers actually, in like, work with the community uh to the let in other games and i think polling is just a really good way to get numbers and opinions where it really counts right because a, a forum thread like like reddit or even like a, a comment chain on twitter there are people who tend to complain because they don't like something and it's always like the people who are against something are the loudest and the most numerous right I think that's just a fact generally along social media. Obviously, there's a few exceptions. And Reddit. Um, yeah, definitely. But uh, there have been so many times where you could see like some hate for something and it still passes with like 80%, right? Which just kind of shows that there was like a silent group of people who were just happy with it and didn't want to like, didn't want to get into the fray of things, right? And I think that polling is a good way to get like that, like, actual quantifiable number of people who like like or dislike something yeah it is yeah. so the silent majority pretty much yeah yeah and it's super unfortunate that something gets 74 percent fails because i think the closer it is to the threshold the harsher it is and i think that i kind of wish the community was more open to us saying anything in 70 to 75 percent is still viable like it could need to, uh, improvements right we might reapproach it in the future with a different take or address the feedback I think, um, I, I mean, can't remember the exact... that seems super fair. That seems quite reasonable. If, you know, 70% of people are on board with something, that's the majority of the community, like, by a fair bit. I think that's pretty fair. Um, if I can add on to that question, so, uh, 
my my take on the whole polling system i i feel like i i've played as well for a really long time i think i started playing in like 2003 around that time and i played continuously and unlike yourself unfortunately when my friends moved over to guild wars and world of warcraft my computer was so crap i couldn't actually upgrade to play those games so i actually got stuck playing runescape but hey here i am but um so i i've seen the progression i've been through pre oc runescape free the evolution to combat and so forth and like my my view on the whole polling thing is like when it first came out into old school i think it was 100 percent needed because um and th this is not a bash to you or anything but obviously with the whole you know uh runescape free basically just getting rid of the childhood game we knew there was a lot of distrust between the players and mods because at that time it was like you it was really difficult to communicate with j mods like it was almost impossible to be honest um so the polling system being there in the beginning I think was needed because it was a case of like, we don't really trust you fully because of what you've done. And I feel like now over the years, like how old, old school RuneScape, like six or seven years. I think um, so. Eight. It, it's like eight, wow. eight years. That's it's been a long no. time. <laughs> Older. <clears throat> and um, with that being said, it's like over those eight years, you guys have delivered some fantastic content. It's like, granted, there's been mistakes here and there. But like what games doesn't have mistakes you know there's always going to be something but for the most for the most of it it's been fantastic content like take the the infernal uh cape and like the inferno the actual area itself it's like when i was younger i used to look at where those massive guards were the big tazar monsters and they were like hey you can't come past here and my imagination as a child was like oh my god there must be a badass monster on the other side of there it's going to be crazy content and you guys delivered some fantastic content with awesome lore and just everything in my opinion was great and i personally feel as a player and i know it's an unpopular opinion i've been told many times but i feel like the trust has been earned i, I feel oh, yeah. like you guys have done a good job and i feel like for me i would rather have more inspiring and more like heartwarming content like really passionate stuff coming out where you mods don't necessarily have to worry in the back of your mind the entire time i'm gonna put all of my love into this but it might not even get into the game like that's that's like my take um and i was wondering what yours was how do you feel yeah that? so like i said i, I kind of spoke a little bit like i didn't really answer the question last time because i spoke about like you know the problems of polling and stuff i think personally I'm a mix between the two, which feels so on the fence, very gothics of me, I know. But like, mm. <laughs> on one hand, I very much agree with you, right? Like, I, I don't believe I could, you know, with a team of people and support that, you know, I have, I, I feel like the team would tell me if I had a stupid idea before it got into the game, uh, for the most yeah. part, right? You know, uh, I think Siren's Tome is actually a good example of, like, where they didn't catch that. Like, but at the same time, the community did and you didn't need to go add that to go to a poll to catch that you just need to have a blog saying what we're going to do and stuff um but i think that the i think the truth of the matter is that there is a little element of if 75 if you don't have like a high percentage of people want an update um is it even worth your time doing it and like let's say like you know 50 percent of people want something right like exactly down the middle maybe let's just like no maybe down the middle is a bad idea but let's say like 60 so you've got like a little bit like you know there's a majority of people that want it but if, if your target audience for an update is going to be that small like for people who are actually think it's a good addition to the game should you even be doing it or should you be doing something better there is an element of that uh but yeah. I, I agree there's like a probably a better balance of it <clears throat> I, I i do hate that we can't pull surprises on the community you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. um I, back in the day right the slayer skill just dropped right and, and there was, like was the an abyssal whip <laughs> that existed, yeah. right? You know, but you people didn't, didn't know. know. <laughs> people didn't know. People went kill these creatures and were like, "What is this? Oh, what the hell? This is stronger than a simi. This is insane!" And then they start selling it for like you know, like twenty mil or like more or whatever, yeah. which back in the day was like huge money, yeah. right? Like we can't drop that. We we couldn't just turn around and say, "Hey, by the way, there's a raid coming out next week, right? And there's going to be new drops and new bosses, and you guys can't like." You guys are not going to know what's happening, right? We, we'd have to go like, okay, well, you know, you, there's a few things we want to do about this raid that's new from the old one, and we need to get them past the poll and the updates and stuff. I, there's an element of me that does feel that way. At least, at least leagues kind of is our surprise factor, and like could, yeah. Deadman could be as well. Mm -hmm. Where like, I still think like 
dead man maybe more so because they've got such a dedicated community you probably want to run past them at an earlier point than a league's design um because i think i'd, I'd really more value that player input because i think you could you could take some really bad turns with pvp like content through like yeah. just, you need you need people who know the design better but i think one thing that i'd like to see explored with a poll which i don't even think this would get past the community would be less of hey here's the specific details and more hey here's a poll would you guys like us to work on this pvm update this pvm update this pvm update or this pvm update and get it voted or even it could even be like an elimination where one time you vote on four then there's three left then you vote on three and then the next week there's two and then eventually the winner wins because the problem with a four vote poll or three vote poll is even if 30 percent like it and that's their favorite one and their everything else is at like 20 something you could read that as 70 percent of people hate that one right <laughs> so you need to kind of have a, a multi-layer thing but i think the and you could do the same for like hey, we are going to have a PvP update. Tell us which one you'd like, right? Do you know what I mean? Um, as yeah. opposed to, you know, <clears throat> straight up, does this get in the game or not? <laughs> and yeah, I, I think, that, I think that would, would be, a, would that be, would be a super interesting way to do polls, <clears throat> right? Where it's just like, broadly, would you like this, this, or this, you know? Yeah. Um, and then give the team, like, freedom to work with it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I will say, um, when you say about a uh a player sort of not ran but like you know the thought of having a game where it's like this game is almost like designed in some ways and sort of like approved by the player base i think i, I can't really think of many games that are like that and i think that's a super cool it's a selling point it's awesome you know that's something which is really unique to runescape um and it, it's not anything like i want the polling system to be just straight out removed or anything like that um I just feel like there should be some more flexibility with it, considering how well, for the most part, the updates have came into the game. Um, and also, like, I ain't gonna lie, man, I do feel bad, like, in terms of the creativity, because it must be super disheartening if you work really hard on something, and then the players just don't want it, you know what I mean? And like if it wording? is by a small percentage... Yeah, what was it that failed the polls by, like, 1% and was a huge thing? Was it that? Sailing? or? No, nah, probably I'm warding. Sure. Warding was like seventy percent probably. Warding was so. It was warding was like excited about warding, yeah, but it, I, it, it seemed reasonable in my opinion. I don't know mm. why I didn't pass. The problem with warding was, and this is the thing we've learned about skills and especially really big meaty designs like that, is the first pass has to be like, like Perfect. absolutely like tight in its design, right? Uh, the problem was that you would read the feedback after like warding blog three that were like, I'm voting no because of battle wards. And you're like, we, we, we eliminated battle wards from blog one to two, and we're now on three, you know, after, after like doing all the feedback, right? And you can't like shake people's first opinion on an update necessarily. And with, a, with something like a skill, that's so important because um, skills are never, I don't think we'll ever get a skill that passes with like, eight, like in the mid eighties percent, right? Because there are just a, there's such a strong group of people that just never want to skill in old school runescape, right? And yeah. before we even get to a skill, I think we need to ask the question <clears throat> um, generally. Um, ask the community, would you like to see a new skill in old school runescape in any capacity? Because if that doesn't have like high 80s to 90%, you're never getting a skill in the game. Yeah, right? that's true. That's very that's true. true. So would you say there is or isn't a problem with um, sort of like, like, what I'm asking is, are there a lot of J mods who kind of are a little disheartened by the polling system or is it something that isn't really that much of an issue in the in jagex i wouldn't say it's that much of an issue to me like polling system is kind of like the goalposts you know where we it's always thinking about it and like it, it is a question in design a lot that's like could this even pass a poll right and if it, if we can, if we don't think we can ever get this to pass a poll maybe we should just drop it which is a shame right i, I think yeah. there's a lot of potentially untapped potential there um and I think it does dishearten things to an extent. Um, I think, I mean, you guys like, like talking about PvP and stuff. PvP has all sorts of problems with polls. Not only because, mm. you know, how would I put this? The, the, there's the toxic side of polling. And it's not voting no to an update that you think is bad for the game. It's voting for, I'm going to vote no to this because I want the devs to spend their time on something else. Right? Like content for me. Yeah, right? I've heard that a lot. Uh, yeah. 
that's the toxic part where it's like, oh, if I vote no to this, there's the devs aren't going to spend two months working on this PvP update. They're going to pitch something else and work on that instead, right? And that's the thing I really hate uh, yeah. about it because, you know, I wish... That's why I said kind of the way I worded it before was it'd be nicer if we could say, we're doing a PvP update. You guys just get to decide which one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, God, Would, you know, have you guys ever? Sorry, have, <laughs> this is just in my brain. Elsewhere, have you ever considered like um, maybe like a beta world where you guys can be as creative as you like and like They've not work on making too. it, not not working on polishing all of the content and making all the like icons and stuff, but just like filling a beta world where it's like okay, so we're we're flirting with the idea of like this PvP mini game, or we're we're thinking about this boss or this piece of content, or this new skill, and just having it so people can go on to there and experience it, and it'd be like a case of, you know, it's like if it's a PvP mini game, people can read about it, and you can interpret that however you like, but when you actually play it, you get a real feel for whether it's going to be a fun piece of content or whether it's not really that great. Is that anything that's ever been, like, discussed? Or is that just too much work? Yeah. Beta worlds have been heavily discussed, mostly because our tournament worlds are just not that great. Uh, the problem with our tournament worlds is, and this is like, you know, you guys, oh, that's just a tech problem, right? But it is an actual semi-issue that we can't say this code doesn't run. Like, how to put it? We, we would write, set to write this block of code of only run in a tournament world. But that, that code is actually still, like, it's still the same code that's being run on both a tournament world and a non-tournament world. It's just, you know, we have these checks. And that's why, like, some things that are like client side, like a spellbook. Like the people are like, why did the why did all the spells for the Archaea spellbook change? It's because we had to do a tournament world with the Kingdom Divided, right? Um, ah. And it's really limiting in that in that way, right? Because right there's it what we what we would ideally want for a beta world is to say, here's this code for the game, and this one runs on these worlds, and here's the main one that's untouched, right? That would be much cleaner from our side. That's that's mostly a tech concern. I think in terms of like getting something ready for a beta, sometimes it would be too far. I think like if you did a whole boss and you had a theme and you designed all the mechanics and you had them play test it, you've basically got a finished boss minus whatever comes in feedback. And then if that fails a poll, that is a that's a substantial amount of lost work, right? Yeah. Um, and also like especially with a boss, maybe you don't want to spoil all the mechanics, right? Like if we did that for like like a new raid, like you don't want people to already know the entire raid, but like maybe you could do it for like try out a two bosses out of like six or something you know like maybe yeah. you can make it working <clears throat> it's just really I mean, difficult I th yeah and to, to be fair a lot of pvm bosses and so forth like at this point you don't even need to worry about it passing like it, it's gonna pass i i guess my question was more sort of like towards pvp things coming into the game i think that's where i was trying to come from more. doesn't um doesn't league of legends also have a not a, not a beta server but a server where yeah. certain updates come in the game Obviously, yep. PvP, there's no skilling on League, and they test them before they reach a real main net, and yeah. uh, RuneScape could definitely take that approach for PvP. Yeah. It, uh, especially it would just when a... those new Arceus spells hit the game, and I was trying them out. I mean, I still have a lot of questions about those spells coming in. That was, that was <laughs> yeah, something that was weird for, curve. Yeah. <laughs> for PvP. I mean, but Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Husky, sorry. Our, the biggest difference is for League of Legends is the community can't say we don't want this champion because it's bad right or we think it's terrible yeah. they the community will give feedback and they'll make changes and i think beta worlds could be fantastic for that for us assuming it's going in regardless right like do you know what i mean you still have to have the uh, assumption we're gonna beta test this and it's coming <clears> in <throat> but this is your chance to really give us a ton of more in de de depth feedback okay. because you know especially if it runs different code bases we don't have to worry about Right now with beta world, we have to worry about, you know, we've got a release coming this Wednesday and obviously that could affect the beta, right? It'd be nice if we could say this is the beta world code and it's staying that way for a month and you guys play test and we'll constantly get feedback. And maybe, you know, week two, we we, we send like an update for like a couple of feedback changes to see how it feels out, right? I, I, I do That'd think... That'd be sweet. That'd be amazing. I do think beta worlds generally could be really, really, really beneficial for us. And it's something yeah. that we want. It's <clears> something that like, you know, we have... The QA managers in Jagex who really want it because I mean you could imagine how much nicer that would be for the QA team to have a beta world as a disposal. Yeah, feels like the next step, the really. And yeah, just I gotta say yeah. for League though, what do you say about like something about their uh, feedback for League? I, I swear to God, it's worse than the feedback you get from RuneScape Reddit is what the League of Legends 
Reddit page is. I always scheme it, so <laughs> it's, I wouldn't feel bad about that. It's pretty toxic over there, too. I just had to throw that in. Sorry, Rixie. Um, No, no, it's all good, man. It's all good. Sorry. Uh, what I was going to say was, obviously, oh, I kind of, I got... I'm, <laughs> I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop myself i'm just gonna stop myself because i could talk i could talk to husky all day i got a million things to ask him on to pick his brain <laughs> i'll let i'll let rice cup take one okay because i got a lot of pvp focused stuff and we'll try and save that towards the end if that's cool okay yeah yeah i don't i don't think i don't think those two things are 100 percent related to the polling because i think a lot of times with pvp and polling is that if it af negatively affects normal players outside of pv like outside of the wilderness like let's say it's a poll about uh, making a new weapon that comes out from wilderness only, right? Those those will probably never pass, right? But like when it comes to like introducing a new PvP mini game where it's more like ex you know more more it's standalone, right? I don't mm -hmm. think those necessarily have an issue of passing because it doesn't really affect the you know the average player, you know. Like elements is pretty standalone, you know. For example. I mean, I would, I would kind of disagree with that because I think there would be quite a big population of people that would say, "Why are you guys working on something PvP related when there's a five percent of the player base that do PvP when you could be working on something more popular?" I think people would inherently have a problem with that. To be honest, well, with I you. mean, LMS is here, so I don't know about that. Yeah. you can't really I, say that LMS is the most popular true. content in the game, right? Because I mean, it, I think, it is I think one of the biggest issues is when. When you put when you put PvP related polls that directly impact the average player that that votes, that's that's usually a much higher chance of it not passing, right? Whereas if it's something that's yeah. more exclusive, you know, in, uh, on its own, like a you know mini game or whatever, right? It's those those actually have a chance of passing. I mean, and the beta worlds are fine because I, I think you know obviously there's no real spoilers anyways. You know, it's like you just do it and you you see how it feels. And then you give the feedback, right? If it doesn't feel good, you get the feedback. If not, you know, you get the praise. But yeah, like, you know, I just think there's d definitely a difference, right? Because a lot of it, a lot of like, because like when people vote on the polls, they vote to gain an advantage, right? You know, like people aren't like complete dickheads for the most part. It's just, it's just if something gets in their way, they're probably going to vote no, which is like if it's something in the wilderness, right? Because it's like, oh, I got to do clues grows. I don't want, you know, some... Some freaking PK with a new better weapon, you know, kicking my ass, right? Like they obviously vote no, but like, and if it, if, you know, if it's like beneficial to them, they vote yes, right? Like a lot of times, polls that are like, you know, basically in a nutshell, it's like, do, do you want this benefit, right? Obviously yes, right? But most people are gonna vote for things that benefit them. So I think there's definitely a distinction to be made, you know, between like what kind of PvP stuff gets easily failed and what kinds actually have a chance right i think there is a distinction between that but yeah. but i guess you know I, I just want to add that to it because you know it's important to to i think address that uh pvp is not just one thing right like there's wilderness pvp and they be like there could be a mini game pvp right very different things right i feel like oh definitely yeah. definitely man yeah uh I, I guess really for me, yeah yeah so i, I mean I, I think we've kind of talked about it enough now but you just uh, want to was, throw it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to kind of like, you know, <laughs> add add to it, you know, because like I was I was listening the whole time, you know, I wasn't just like not listening, but like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any, anyways, I guess what what would I want to talk about that we haven't? Well, I guess we can get back to the more like more more pressing stuff that's happening, you know, in more recent times. So obviously the equipment rebalancing, you know, it's a huge topic. It's kind of died down a lot because, you know, no new news. But I, I, yeah, I heard you guys were going to put some new news about it. But is there anything you can talk about with the equipment rebalancing? Like, especially the blowpipe. I feel like the blowpipe is probably the most difficult thing, right, for you guys to, to, to talk about. Because I remember, you know, you guys changed up a few things, like, in your previous blogs, like, stats and all that. But then you guys were talking about how, like, maybe one day you could expand range into, uh, like, four different styles. I read that. That was... Three different styles, kind, of, kind of like how Melee has Stab slash Crush, right? And, and, and like, in RuneScape 3, it, 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 it's the same, but for all styles, right? So, like, Magic has four styles. Range has, like, four styles or something like that as well. So, so I, I remember you guys were talking a little bit about that, but then, like, kind of scrapped the idea. So, like, what's, what's kind of, like, the hurdles so far, you know, with the equipment rebalancing? 
Because you've already released some things, like the D-Mace, for example, being four ticks instead of five, which is pretty big. And the spear, big. yeah. Yeah, and the spear. Which has thrown so, me off, buddy, but you go ahead and answer that. Every <laughs> time I spear someone, man. Yeah. <laughs> so how's that, how's that like, process going so far, you know? If, if there's much you can talk about, yeah? Yeah, I, I could definitely talk about it. Um, God, I feel like this has put a sign on my back, like, when you hate what's coming, like, I'm the guy to, like, post <laughs> Um, yeah. I, I, I spent a lot of time working on combat achievements with uh, with Mod Arcane, and right now, Equipment Rebalance is kind of like, we call it like a blocker for, for that update, right? We don't want, yeah. like, as a team, like we did talk about, we could just release combat achievements anyway, and like, I'm, I've put my foot down quite adamantly, and there are other people in the team that support this, um, you know, that we don't want to release something that's like, like combat achievements, and then like nerf a blowpipe after, because right, you see how people are responding to um the you know, holy inferno situation right i think you guys spoke about it in your last podcast where it's like people are oh just you need to remove all the inferno capes from people who you know completed the inferno beforehand and make them get it again with a new blowpipe and that's oh, only yeah <laughs> that's only going to be huge like on a on so much bigger scale if combat achievements is released right and there's like all these like skill based achievements because you know while you know, speed any speed run tasks obviously they're DPS checks, so nerfing the DPS matters, and you know, kill count tasks obviously they matter because you know you kill the boss faster. But even like the more mechanical ones, like it does matter if you're fighting the boss for less time, right? So I really don't want to do that. So like blowpipe is like the big one for equipment rebalancing, which is a shame because I know there are people in the PvP community who like really itching for like the black dehyde and din stuff you know yeah i'm, um, I'm itching but, for it too <laughs> and, and, and they are coming like i've got i've finished the designs for everything in equipment rebalancing right all that it comes down to now is team feedback scheduling like these blogs alongside all our other content stuff because like we will have like this piece of content's coming out so like we need to make sure we have a blog about a kingdom divided because we need to get this information out before it's deadline and we can only blog so much so like you know there is an element of you know I send the blog to community management, they get it written up, and then they send it to editorial, and then it comes back and we all have to review it. So like it is a fairly lengthy process to get a blog out, right? In in terms of all the steps. So I've had the designs done for a little bit, but yeah, blowpipe is is the is the really big one, right? As as you are you guys already said, we released a batch of changes first. Because like all the stuff that was like tick faster stuff and you know the changes to like you know the the plate armor and it was basically non-controversial is like how we we said it right this stuff is things yeah. that people generally seemed happy about and there's no point in this stuff waiting on the blowpipe let's just, let's just put it out right it, it, clean our clean our plate with it it's done it makes it nice and easy for everybody and our biggest problem with equipment rebalancing and like i said to you guys i watched your your podcast last time like a few days ago just just to give myself a heads up of you know you guys general opinions um about it but you know you guys you guys were just like keep scrolling on that blog and you were like go on keep going oh there's so much and there's more and there's more and that yeah. was actually a problem <laughs> for us uh we thought it would be a great idea we thought we we rip off the band-aid on the blowpipe we we address a bunch of topics all at once get out in one fell swoop you know if we it's kind of like get some of the negativity over now like all in one batch and then like you know, that means that we're free to then talk about all the cool, exciting stuff we've come after and stuff like that. You know, it's just, it was kind of like a, that was the rough strategy, which doesn't work because like, while that, while that would work, if the designs were good, the problem was that it was too many discussion points for us to keep track of. So like, we'd get like immediate feedback on the blowpipe and we'd have like quick meetings to decide, are we going to make any changes? What are those changes going to be? send people off to run the numbers, blah, 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 come back with the numbers, relay with the team. Okay, we're happy with the blowpipe, now go. And we do. We say we're announcing a beta, and people are like, okay, well, we'll see where the blowpipe goes. But now, oh, Black Dehyde, there were people in the first batch that were complaining about Black Dehyde, right? But now that blowpipe isn't the center of attention, that suddenly creeps up, and you're like, oh, wait, you guys weren't happy with Black Dehyde? We thought it was just like a few people the first time, and now it turns out that's what everybody's complaining about. Okay, well, let, let's go. Let's go back and talk about Black D. You suddenly realize that like it's really slowing us down. That all of these things are dependent on each other, right? It was too many things in the air at once. Like, you know, you're essentially you know juggling like five balls, and in order to get it through, you need to make sure all of them stay in the air, right? And what we kind of realized was we kind of just needed to take it bit by bit. Um, and 
at the time we were doing equipment rebalancing, we were very much like, you know, we've got a release date in mind for combat achievements. That that's kind of line to get done with equipment rebalancing. And you know, I, I'm proud of the team for making this call generally. But we eventually reached the conclusion, very short minute. I think you guys realized it was like one Monday. It was, hey, we're going ahead with this, and the next Tuesday we pulled it right, which was we weren't happy with where that proposal landed at all. Um, it was full of compromises, and it was just full of like it didn't fix the problems. I, I think that was what we, we spoke about a lot internally. And we, we were originally like, okay, but we'll go with it anyway, because it seems fine. And then we were just like, no, let's, let's delay combat achievements. Let's, let's actually take a step back and do this properly bit by bit. And it does lengthen things. You know, people are saying, you know, the content drives and blah, blah, blah. And it, yes, equipment rebalancing has taken a lot of time. It's been like a focus of mine for like, since basically like, you know, you guys, saw it last that's what i've been working on alongside you know supporting clans a little bit here and there it's a lot of time to get this right but i think it's so important to at least address it right the, the correct answer could be we do nothing with the blowpipe um, i was gonna ask that, and yeah. that <laughs> you know we could just say that but i think regardless whatever answer we come away with should be our answer going forward right we can't come back in two years time and say okay we're gonna ditch it for now and then reignite the conversation when we have more time like and then release combat achievements i don't think that's fair to the community because i think they're absolutely right is that's what got us into this problem in the first place i can't speak much to the team at the time i've worked here two years but you know this problem should have been addressed a long time ago you know yeah what what was um, the thing that made you guys address it in the first place like how 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 come it did take so long and what made you think oh that needs to change i don't actually know what the trigger was if i'm being honest uh for all for all i know it could have been me which is going to get people hating me more but like i remember coming in like it finished probation you go and then i, I started a conversation i was like so are we actually doing anything about the blowpipe? pipe you know because we all know it's busted you know we we've all we spoke about it in my interview and it was like i think i said like people asked like what would you change and i'm like i don't know what i'd change but you know blowpipe basically dominates everything and then and then it turns out like as i'm having that conversation someone's like yeah i've i've been looking into it and someone's like yeah i'd support it and you know we're looking into it so i was like oh okay there's already something in motion but we started this discussion about equipment rebalancing like over a year before you guys even saw it right Damn. that's how long it's been in progress it's always been a matter of getting the time to schedule it getting the time to develop it and design it and everything amongst everything else and you know so I don't know, like, I don't think I'm that like <laughs> big headed in a way that like, oh, I started it and it was because I came in, it fixed. No, it, it was definitely in the works before that. But I think sometimes it just takes sometimes just one extra vote internally or one extra person helping to push it matters. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, um, I, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's a really hard thing to like get right because ultimately it boils down to power creep. And when you have an item already, which is very accessible, but like you said, dominates most of the content, it, it's like a lot of games, how do games deal with that? It's like you take World of Warcraft, for example. It's like if they have something which is unbelievably OP, like in, in the natural grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter because as soon as a new expansion comes out, it's like that stuff's obsolete anyways. And it's like you're on to the next chapter. But Old School RuneScape is one of those games where it's very unique in the sense of like, we want to keep everything valuable and usable. And it's like, how mm -hmm. do you deal with that power creep? It's like, without making items completely obsolete, it's like, do you make them worse so you can add more items in to fill those tier gaps? Do you slow down that power creep? Like, it's like, do you make the blowpipe something which is always going to be valuable because it's going to be like an asset to something else which is better? It's so like in RuneScape 3, uh, I haven't played it, but I hear a lot of people telling me that like Torva armor, it's still very valuable because it can then be used as components for the best armor in game. So it's definitely not an easy thing that you're just going to like figure out overnight. And I think, you know, the stance you're taking with taking your time with it and trying to get it perfect. I really appreciate that. I don't think it's something that should be rushed at all. Like, it's quite a big deal. Yeah, and I, I, I think that, like, I think by the time this goes out, you guys will see the direction that I've decided to take with it in design. And by I, I don't mean, like, hey, this is Mod Husky and in only Mod Husky, right? There's been a lot of teams have given feedback on this, and I've been, like, 
working with like other jmods who know combat very well and said like hey what about this we scrapped ideas and stuff and, and worked on yeah. things but if i could like so... just talk a little bit about like our last proposal it was so flawed in like so many little ways like final proposal which was like i think we we're talking about power creep and like there's lots of reasons why you might want to fix it people talk about like oh it's because it's cheap and if jagex just banned the botters like that wouldn't be an issue and you know it's still a very fairly common item and the the biggest problem is that like it being cheap is one factor it basically it steps on melee as well right it, it quite literally yeah. is a case of unless you <laughs> add like a huge ridiculous ranged modifier onto a boss like it still could be quite valuable vi viable right i'm not sure how much you guys know about this but like the base defense level of the boss is one thing and then like you've got like additional defenses to specific styles like range stab crush yeah if weaknesses yeah yeah, so like if, if the defense. if the defense of a creature is really low, the range defense has less impact, right? So in order to combat the blowpipe, you might just accidentally be hurting melee, right? Um, and then as far as power creep in PVE, it's not really a huge concern. You could just keep increasing the HP of bosses, like you know, until like until you're getting millions, right? Like you know, all, every game has hit that thing. Obviously, Please, I don't think no. we get there in old school RuneScape. <laughs> You know, we're not. I don't think we'll, we'll ever get there, but you get the idea Hopefully that you just not. make bosses that are tankier and bosses that have more HP. But power creep's a real thing in PvP. Fortunately, that's not the blowpipe issue. But PvP has the problem of players are, you know, have 99 hit points, <laughs> maybe yeah. a bit more than anglerfish or a brew. Uh, and that yeah. was the problem RuneScape three had, where they they said we want to you know start having a way to increase players' hit points, you know, to higher levels and stuff. And you can see why they tried to fix that problem. But yeah, I mean, generally the the problem with power creep isn't so much that hey, just make something better than a blowpipe. And I'm like, hope the, I'm not sure if you guys saw like in the last blog we had, it wasn't on a podcast, anymore, but we started introducing these like DPS curves, right? And the, it kind of shows like how things stack up against, like as the defense increases where they sit. And the problem with the blowpipe is it just doesn't deteriorate, deteriorate fast enough as defense increases, right? Like you start going like, okay, you want something with higher, high accuracy to be good. And it just barely fit like you you can only do that by going one level higher than the blowpipe and starting from a clean slate we're going to have one tier level above blowpipe and we're going to have a high accuracy version um a high dps version etc and then as soon as you do that you've basically ruined the twisted bow right yeah because the twisted bow is that thing that's just above blowpipe uh, against like a you know a bunch of creatures of magic level if you have a thing that's as powerful as a twisted bow like everywhere right like a high accuracy version of, you suddenly have like the twisted bow is next to no use which you know might be a, a a step we take in the future you know where we we have like ranged get to that tier up but the problem is that like you realize you're literally making huge decisions that impact so many things not because the fundamental like tiering problem is wrong it's because of one item and the thing i hate the most about the blowpipe is it's a one to meta Right, there is never a choice where you're like, I'm going to take a crystal bow because crystal bow sucks. There's never a choice you'll take an ACB, really, unless like the blowpipe can't reach it like Zuck, or if it's got like ridiculously high hit points or like and high defense that you need the ruby bolt spec procs, right? And even then, it also has to be strong against magic and melee or something because otherwise you would just use those instead, right? It's literally this is the problem we're trying to fix, and the problem with the last solution is we basically said we're going to take a bit off everything like we just basically made the blowpipe weaker right i like flat yeah. out it just had lower mm -hmm. numbers um and then when we when we took back what we did is we said we're going to step back a bit and give some of those max hits back to like rune and dragon and the problem was that like it was still dominant right you, we would have had our last proposal and it still would have been blowpipe everything and if you have a tebow it's better right um, yeah. And a, a few more places you might have meleeed instead of range, and that was it. And that wasn't what we were trying to go for, um, not in not in the slightest. And that was why we've pulled back on the design because we compromised almost a bit too much, and in a way that went against our original goals. Um, that's for you guys. So if it, with the crystal bow, we we started looking and said, what if we like buff the crystal bow, crystal armor set bonus to the point where our proposed blowpipe had actual competition. We would have had to move the crystal armor set to 220% accuracy. Oh, oh my god. Or, <laughs> That's ridiculous. Holy. Or 40%, no, 50% accuracy and 40% strength. Bearing in mind it was like a 20%. So you basically double the set bonus. Just so that the crystal bow would be stronger 
than our nerfed blowpipe against things about the same defense level as a major in the inferno. That's ridiculous, man. That's crazy. That's insane. And, yeah. and remember, oh, guys, the blowpipe so actually got nerfed as soon as it came in the game the first time because it used to be super mm -hmm. fast in PvP. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah, that was nuts, man. We're talking we're about a double nerf. Yeah. Yeah. Spark, so, yeah it's it's Spark Mac, the blowpipe's like, too fast, bro. <laughs> He he used his yeah, double spec and hit like back to back like fifties on someone in the wilderness. I remember I like, oh that. I was watching Bonesaw yeah. back when Edgeville actually existed, and yeah, yeah that thing he was insane. Straight tab. After he ran I out mean, of food, he straight tabbed. <laughs> the, I just the thing um, with I, the, oh no, you go ahead, sorry. All right, I just have to say, as somebody who always is complaining about rebalancing, like if you ever watch my stream, I'm constantly talking about bulwarks, <laughs> black dehyde, nonstop, and I can't help it. And I don't really mean all the words I say. But I do really appreciate the amount of effort and mindfulness you're putting into this issue. Like now I kind of feel a little better about the whole <laughs> rebalancing thing because I was a bit scared. I'm like, are they ever going to touch these? But it seems like you guys are putting in a whole hell of a lot of work. And I just got to say, bravo. I'm excited to see what you have in, in store. Oh, um, and, did we get a sneak oh, peek oh, on in terms of we? <laughs> the blowpipe nerf idea? Like this new one, right? Like how different yeah. is it, you know? Ooh. It's so the the truth is we don't want it to have a strongly different feel. Like that was why like people said like nerf the attack speed and like blowpipe's almost identity feeling is that two step two tick walk. Yeah, you know, and the speed. Yeah. Um, the vision I have for the blowpipe, and that I've got past the team is that this thing is still is the absolute best thing against low to mid defense targets generally. And we're talking like yep. a ranger in the inferno to maybe like I, I tend to use the major in the inferno as like a solid it's not super tanky but it's at that point where like defense is like starting you to kill it like it's yeah. at that, that's yeah, yeah. It's, it. that, it's that same ballpark that like a lot of top bosses are at roughly uh made mm -hmm. and obviously as low defense and there's exceptions like nylopes and stuff but generally i would see the blowpipe like it's the accuracy that's the problem what you want is for it to still be strong when defenses doesn't matter like you could reduce monsters to that defense level uh from our last proposal it should drop off quicker and what that means is that something else which starts off at like so oh god it's really hard to apply something else will start off at lower defense versus a um zero defense target but it deteriorates slower because it has high accuracy so eventually these lines meet and that's the point where you would use weapon b over weapon a or like weapon c etc and the yeah. hope is that there's a lot more <clears throat> ranged weapons in the ranged meta that is what hopefully the blog um, we'll be releasing. Bring back the cable, -ish. man. <laughs> um, well, that's the thing as well. Like people talk a lot about like all these things, like Carol's bow and and a lot of tier seventy items. And to me, like this is we could address those, but I feel like the tier seventy range meta is kind of healthy. Carol's is like the one that's just a bit weak. But like the problem is that we want a tier seventy five range meta, right? And we don't yeah. have one. We have a blowpipe, right? And that's kind of what yeah. I, the focus is on, like with blowpipes and like things like the crystal armor set and a few other surprises in there uh that that's Ooh. all i'll say and you know i don't really want and pvp okay. as well i, I, I like put that. a lot of thought into that there's a lot of um there's a lot of excitement uh exciting stuff i've thought about for some of the pvp items hopefully that'll be coming soon it's right. later obviously you can't late. tease me like that first, man but, oh <laughs> but, bro soon I'm I'm hopeful that what I've got in mind for the PvP things addresses a lot of the feedback last time where the PvPers are going to be happy because of the whole, like, you know, black dehyde problems, and the PvMers are also going to be happy for reasons. That's I can't really say, sorry. It's mm. like, okay. you know, okay. it, it's basically it's basically like, the, the the problem was we need to... I think the way you, I looked at it was... Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I know really what, what it is for the most part, though, because you, you kind of were like, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he said some key stuff, but yeah, well, uh, we'll wait and see, you know, <laughs> we'll and, as always, opens yeah. the feedback, right? I'm, people are going to say, we don't like this. We do like that. I'm really cautious about compromising on the blowpipe specifically because I'm really happy with where it's at. That doesn't mean I'm going to say my design is, is great and I don't care about what you guys think, right? Uh, I definitely like. I think if I wanted to compromise, I'd probably compromise on other things. But like other people on the team might feel differently, right? Mm. So yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Uh, you're the fundamentals of the blowpipe, and like I completely agree with what you're going with there, in the the sense of like, you know, take for example when you do maiden and tob, you get the blood spawns or the crabs. 
you know, those kind of things which you need to kill quickly and should have low re range defense, I think blowpipe perfect. And then yeah. when I think about people using the blowpipe because it's better than using melee to kill Bandos, I'm just like, it just, to me, it doesn't make <laughs> sense. I, I completely agree with the stance of if it has low defense, uh, if it's like a squishy mob effectively, you know, you want to kill it fast, therefore you just take the weapon that attacks the fastest, the blowpipe fits that. But then when you have a monster which is like a big meaty beast, it's like, it should be something that's like a slow drawn, twisted yeah. bow shot, like accurate, powerful bang. And it's like, it shouldn't be a case of the blowpipe dominates absolutely no. everything. But something to bear in mind is like us free here as players we obviously have bias because for me i can very easily sit here and say yeah just nerf the blowpipe but i can buy a tebow there's a lot of players that will look at this and i know for a fact because of my community will come to me and say the reason why you're okay with this is because you have the tebow which is the better option and a lot of people don't see the for the long-term health of the game it's not healthy to have an item like that, which is questionably rare. Like, if you compare it to how hard it is to get a blowpipe to a Tebow, there's a very big difference in, like, chance of getting that item. And there's a reason why one's worth a lot more than the other. But just because you can't afford a Tebow doesn't mean that the item, which is quite relatively easy to get and very cheap if you're a normal account, should be so dominating. So I understand that I have a bias myself when it comes to that, but I think that in terms of like logically it makes sense that it should be squishy monsters that you can kill fast that's when it's optimal to use the blowpipe and then big monsters that have a lot of hp or a lot of armor you need something which is a lot stronger than a little you know a little pipe that shoots darts out of it i i, I totally agree with you on that all right and, uh, i want to add one thing though oh uh, you, yeah you you go first let's go now go I just want to add on that one point because you lit, you raised the thing that I forgot to mention. I said I, I remember I mentioned this when I talk about blowpipe. Is uh, it, I, I love this quote from Arcane actually when we were talking about it, and we had it in our last blog, which was exactly the feeling you're describing there, Rexy, where we didn't just nerf the blowpipe, nerf the player, right? We nerfed the player by twenty percent because there was no alternative, right? All these things that blowpipe was suddenly bad at. You had no option unless you had a twisted bow, which feels terrible between four mil item and a one bill item. It's really hard to know where the dust will settle with prices, but I'm really, really hopeful that the new design for equipment rebalance has options between a, the two, right? Where, you know, you might eventually get a twisted bow and it might still, you know, make some of the middle options a bit, not redundant, but worse because you have a twisted bow, but at least you have stepping stones. Right. Yes. You know, you yes. have those op you have those options to deal with the higher defense creatures that a twisted bow is typically used for. Obviously, it's technically high magic level, but sometimes they tend to be one and the same in some of our boss design, right? But like, you have that option where, oh, my blowpipe isn't going to cut it. If I save up, I can get that thing that's not as expensive as a twisted bow by far. Obviously, I don't know where prices are going to settle, but that's the hope, right? Because, you know, what that my what it isn't quite like explained in the blog, but my principle was generally players are nerfed and the blowpipe in some cases is going to be like 30% worse, 40% worse, right? The player should have an option that is never like 10% worse than they had before. Roughly. Right. Yeah. That That's roughly where I, I, the number I had in my head is that like, if at any point the player is like 10% weaker than they used to be with no option, we've probably done something wrong. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure if the number holds up exactly everywhere. There's, there might be a break point somewhere, but do you know what I mean? Like that feeling of like you, you have options is, is important, right? Because people yeah. make goals around having those options. People literally will grind for months to get an item that is a midway point, right? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. So yeah, the new, the new suggestion would, you would in theory have something in the middle. Is that what you're trying to get at? Yeah, but not in a way that like devalues the twisted bow in sense of like, yeah. oh, like twisted bow is redundant because there's something in the middle. It's more like we're allowed to nerf the blowpipe harder against like these higher defense targets because there's an option that suddenly is now there that wasn't there before, right? Do you yeah. know what I mean? That's kind yeah, yeah. Of I how see it where is. yeah, I see where where things are aligning. 
But um, I, I mean, I, there's there's another like side to it, right? Which is defense reducing weapons, right? So a lot of the old bosses, they don't have any mechanics that like stop their defense from going down. So I think a lot of those are probably still not going to change that much, like for like the higher level players, you know that that knows how to take advantage of like the spec reduction, you know, defense reduction stuff. That's cool, right? You're forgoing but, yeah. your special attack to make the blowpipe really good against this thing that it might be just okay at or, or bad at. Yeah. Right? Like that that yeah. actually makes it important, right? You know? But yeah, it's going strategy. forward though, going forward though, because like, you know what I mean? Like the Warhammer kind of used to be the blowpipe in the, in the sense that like, if you had a Warhammer, every boss would be pretty much easier. But I've noticed you guys have been, re you know, making, making new stuff that, that makes the Warhammer less and less useful. So are you going to kind of keep that trend going, you know, kind of deal? I think it's important that the Warhammer continues to have a use, right? And I don't just mean, yeah. I mean against new content even going forward, right? I think there's mm -hmm. a genuine thing we have to think about when we do boss design. And like, you know, there's an element of when we look at a boss, we decide roughly in our heads what weapon the player should be using. Obviously, meta's changed. Like, I don't think anyone would have imagined Scythe Sarpus walking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> stuff like yeah. that. There's cool stuff the players figure out, right? But just on, like, on paper, you generally can know going into it, especially, like, you know, there are people on the team that have the tools that could do the DPS calculations and stuff to know, hey, is the, is the blowpipe better than the twisted bow against this boss, right? And I think that, like, Dragon Warhammer should be a consideration for that as well. Um, I really mm -hmm. like what we did with uh, So It's Out generally, where it's got like a threshold, but I don't think that should be the thing for every boss. Yeah, yeah. Um, you want to kind of keep a variety, is is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. only thing I wish we could telegraph better is that the threshold exists, right? Because players yeah, just not, figure it out with like Monster Examine, and there's a lot of under the hood stuff that like really yeah when Mott Ash, mechanical players when Mott Ash randomly answers some dude's question about like Dark Beast boss having like a cap on how much you can reduce per phase everyone's like what the heck it's like so the warhammer is not that not as useful because uh there's like there's no point in doing like a third spec you know <laughs> and then the but whole strategy you still want it right sorry but you still want it right you yeah still you still want, want to spec. but it's like it's like oh wait so i mean you guys might as well divvy up the specs you know and that's what what's the what's changed nowadays is that people are like all right i'll spec the first two phases you spec the next you know you spec two and three before it used to be like, all right, everybody just land, you know, land a Dump spec. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's how yeah. it worked. So, yeah, well, I think we could do a better job telegraphing, like, you know, a message in the chat box to be like, you know, the dark, really the cool. dark beast Oop, reappears and it's and restores its stats or something like that, right? You need to have yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like nightmares, really bad for that. Like you don't yeah, know, like, oh, it's yeah, a new yeah. nightmare that has stats that are back. The, the yeah. amount of times people are like, wait, why don't you like Warhammer the boss in a so it's like. Uh, well, look, it's complicated. You know, then you have to like explain <laughs> to them, like, oh, Price yeah, pops okay, so there's actually a threshold, and it's like, and then it regens really fast. It's like, oh, you know, everyone's like, it, it's it's wild. Now, the only way you yeah. figure that out is having someone like monster examine every tick. Every right? time, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's just a bit. <laughs> I'm just like, damn, it's really hard to explain this to you, okay? <laughs> yeah. It's like, I just want to give up then and there. It's like, just, I'm like, just trust me, <laughs> you know, just trust me. Yeah, yeah, nah, yeah. That'd, be, that'd be nice if there were, like, I don't know, some visuals or, like, some... You know what it is, though? When people, like, play full screen, they don't, usually don't read the chat box because most of them don't, don't really stretch their game like that. But, yeah, maybe some sort of visual would be nice to, to suggest, you know, like, their defense going down or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. Pretty... I think that would be nice. But it's, it's obviously not necessary because people are just going to stat spy and find out anyways nowadays. But, yeah. But that's a genuine problem in our game, right? There's a lot of things that are hidden from the player that, like, I think we could do a lot better with that. Um, fun fact, I'm not sure if you guys knew this, there is not a single place in the game that tells you what the range, like, how far your your, your ranged weapon attacks. It's uh, The information yeah. just yeah. isn't presented yeah. to the player. You have right? to test it. It, is, yeah. it, it yeah. isn't even presented that long range increases that by one. Right, we yeah. don't tell the player that. Players figure that out, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think we and there's no harm in telling players that, right? Because the range of a weapon is super important, right? Um, understand. And I think that there's a little more we could do to display information better to players. I mean, that and maybe yeah. the other one as well. Yeah. Is that, like, mm -hmm. You know, we rely on purely the animation of a boss, and you guys go, that kind of looks like a magic attack. I'm guess I'm gonna pray mage, <laughs> and until you like, die, we've got yeah. a really. You've got to really hope that the artist like telegraphed that really well. Um, you know, but yeah. like 
there's little things I think that like could be added that like RuneScape three has. Maybe not like to the level of overwriting hit splats, but I've I'm not sure yeah. if you guys played World of Warcraft, but I've I've, I've played around with the idea internally, like a combat log that tells you you took 30 magic damage from this, and you go, oh, okay, it was magic damage. Do you know what I mean? Because that isn't a skill, right? Knowing which I predator mean, to prey against. You could it's probably an, put that in like uh, when you die. You could get like almost yeah. like a rundown of how much damage. Are you, you is took. that the lead thing like again, that. bro? Because <laughs> they have that in league too, where you get hit and I you mean, can see the no, people who do damage. So. Yeah, but, but the thing is, it's a good idea. Because it is a good if idea. If you're playing league, it's like, oh my god, I just got hit by two thousand mage damage. It's like, yeah. wow, well, I better build visage. something which is mage resist. You know, I don't think that would be a bad idea at all. And you're right as well, because I, I think the boss for me that stands out the most, where it's hard to tell what it's attacking you with. The first time I learned to do Hydra, like I was, the attacks are so fast and so small. I was like, wait, what is it hitting me with? Especially when it gets to the enraged phase and I'm just like, it's like a little, little brewing. needle, like flying yeah. towards you. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, and, yeah, and it's so you fast. Can't... I'm like, I don't know what it is. <laughs> and so it's like, really bad, right? In a way, because the only way it telegraphs it under the color. Balls. Yeah. Sometimes well, well, yeah. color. You can't rely on someone being able to tell the colors apart in this day and age. Right? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's a, just yeah. a ball and it's red or black, yeah. Yeah. So ideally, you want a different color. You potentially want, like, a message in the chat box, and you want a different shape or something. Mm. So, like, you know, like, someone who um, someone who can't tell colors apart could, like, read the message or, like, look at the shape. Or someone who, like, generally has bad eyesight, like, maybe at least they could read the chat yeah, box. Yeah, or, like, but, make the range ball spikier, you know, or something. Because they're all just spike. little balls. They're just little balls, you, just, you know? You could literally just do that. It'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's middle grounds, right? But like, these yeah. are genuine design problems that most players don't care about, right? <laughs> yeah. True. That's that that's true. Yeah, that's true. Most people could see colors, but there are there are some people that ha that can. Um. So, if I may dive into a little bit of PvP. Um, Ooh, okay. <laughs> oh boy. So, it it's not. I, I'm gonna throw this out. It might be a bit philosophical, I guess. But when it comes to PvP and jagex the vi like i don't know how it works i don't know if it's just a small team of you guys that are working on it or if it's just like collective of all of you guys but with the general consensus with pvp i know it's really difficult to cipher through feedback because everybody has a different version of what's the fix right everybody has a different idea some people think make bh a certain amount of gp per hour other people think put content inside of the wilderness so my question for you is that I know that you guys are working on Last Man Stand, uh, not Last Man Stand, Dead Man Mode, which I think is fantastic. Um, in terms of there being some kind of fix slash improvement for PvP, is it the vision of Jagex that that fix is going to come in the sense of like some sort of content like Dead Man Mode, as in like a time, uh, time trialed piece of content which only lasts a certain amount of time, or is it working on things in the actual game which are long term for players that they can do every moment of every day or is uh, it both I, I, I think it should be both i think that oh god this is this is really hard to word correctly so if i get this wrong like hopefully like, no it's a we'll dude, take, get what take, i mean take your time with it man yeah, i know we'll, it's a hard we'll conversation edit it. to have uh, just kidding <laughs> so, so in terms of like i think dead man is a good piece of PvP content that could be reliable and exciting to give PvPers a good a good fix that they want. But it's also the same like leagues for you know non-PvP players, right? It shouldn't be the replaced content for them though, right? That that, that, yeah. that that's really like how I feel and how a lot of people internally feel um, as well. The problem with PvP is that like and this is generally our roadmap problems as well is this is kind of veering off but i'm going to come back to pp like in a bit like with it but um okay. people complain people complain about a lot but in fact we don't have like pvm updates a lot right now right and people and and the biggest problem is that like we already generally know exactly what we're going to release at least in the next three months three to four months right because we need to have a roadmap we need you know there are managers that need to know what we're delivering when we're delivering it by we need to arrange teams we need to get people designing things we need to get poll blogs written we need to get like backlogs of the actual jobs that need done so when it comes to like um immediate things that can do like people ask us for pvm it's much easier to slot in like an, a quick pvm thing because like uh the fasani's nightmare and theater of blood hard mode literally came from um ideation right 
uh, Fear of Blood hard mode was two bosses short of being completed, basically, in ideation. Because someone did it in the time we get to do things for free, right? And it's, it's very easy to say, okay, we understand that and its commercial impact and okay, it only needs like, you know, a month of work to finish it. I mean, it was announced today that the Era Blood Hard Mode is coming next week, right? Uh, it's easy to fit that in into our schedule, right? Uh, it's harder to do that with PvP unless it's like a fix to like content. So like, they're, like the generally like we have a team called the operators and they look at monitoring Ooh, the nice live thing. game, which which is everything, right? That is PvP, that's, you know, like anything. They deal with our poll stuff as well, generally. Uh, and everyone else is on a project team. So when people come to me and say like, hey, I've got a PvP problem, can you fix it? I'm like, well, I'm on a project team that like, I, I've literally got my next work planned for me for the next three months. And if I need to, if I don't do that, that affects that release date and someone else, I, you know what I mean? So basically it comes down to the operators, the most flexible people of doing it. So that team's like goals are really important. Like that team's like, that team then becomes really important for like potentially PvP stuff. But I think the biggest problem is PvP stuff shouldn't just be, you know, maintaining what's in the live game. It should be a mixture of exciting new content. It should be fixes to existing content. But the biggest problems with fixes to existing content are like some of it isn't easy fixes because like botting an LMS as an example, right? Um, it might be a fix to like, oh, let's just remove all the bots, but there's nothing content side you can do it, right? To, to remove the bots. So you start thinking about, can we change the content to make it harder for bots? And suddenly it becomes genuinely annoying and harder for legitimate players too, right? Um, so that's a problem. And, and we really tried to fix things with Bounty Hunter, but we just couldn't find good solutions because in PvP, the other player is the barrier to reward, right? And if they just fall over, you can get rewards faster. And in PvM, the boss is a set difficulty, right? So yeah. we <clears throat> determine the difficulty of the reward and we can generally have more control over hey, we know that you can only complete, you know, like, say, three Theatre Bloods an hour at maximum efficiency, potentially. I'm just throwing the number at ballpark, right? But if the bosses could just let you kill them and do nothing, and you could do a Theatre Blood run in five minutes, that would be broken. But that's what happens in PvP, right? And then legitimate players feel like they're getting punished because, um, like, we're making measures to stop bots, which makes content worse for real players. And it's got this whole horrible mm -hmm. problem where, like, that's a genuine thing that, that that we end up having to deal with, which means that any clear fix, like th there isn't a clear fix for a lot of PP stuff. Um, and sometimes yeah. like that operators team will be like, you know, we're working on poll 75. So they have the same problem that sometimes a project team will have with if I'm stopping to do something for PVP, I have to not do something for poll 75. Right. And, and that's why I think like things like the wilderness project update are a good idea. Um, and generally like we, we, <sighs> if we have fixes to content, it can very easily be shoved into a poll, but that's not true for PvP content, right? It almost always gets done as integrity, and that makes it really hard. Like, we need that concrete design, right? Yeah. Because you, it's not getting polled, right? Um, I hope that kind of explains it. So, like, I think that PvP... Um, I also think, like, I, I came to this realization, like, maybe a couple months ago. People say PvP, and I think the vast majority of people mean PKing, right? Because they're not quite the same. And you guys kind of mentioned this, I think, I can't remember if it was in this um, before we started recording or not, but like Soul Wars is a PvP update by definition, right? But it's not a PvP yeah. update a lot of players wanted, right? Yeah. Like the PvP community are not happy with that update being their PvP update, right? Because they want a PKing update. They want stuff in the wilderness. They want to be rejuvenated. And then that wilderness has problems with predator versus prey content. Is that good? Is it bad? Yeah. It's wilderness almost is right but you have people who are going to be vehemently against it in the community right and you've got people who like will say ah we'll grow up it's the wilderness you know that's what you signed yeah. up for right it, and if, it's, I it's can, real... if i can add on to the soul wars <laughs> thing real quick i think also i can speak from my own personal point here um i think the reason why some people didn't appreciate it is because it's almost just copy past the content like we've had it it's mm -hmm. like you go there, you have a little bit of nostalgia, but nothing's changed, if that makes sense. So as somebody who formerly did a lot of PvP, when I saw Soul Wars came in as the PvP update, my initial reaction was, this is lazy, because you already have that, and it's not too difficult. It's like, it needs to be something new and fresh. Like, that for me is a big issue with PvP, is that there really hasn't been that much. And I would say probably the best PvP content we've had, which is different and is new, would be LMS, 
which has its own set of issues as well. So, sorry, I just wanted to add that in on the uh, the Soul Wars part. Absolutely. And I think that that copy pasta content, I mean, we got the same for Shooting Stars as well. You know, like people... And I think there's a bit more that goes into it, which you guys obviously don't see, right? It's not just copy paste the code. There are a lot of problems with yeah. lifting code from one game to another game. And ge like genuinely, like Soul Wars took a substantial amount of time, right? Um, and it was still a lot shorter than what it would have been if we'd done it from scratch. Um, I think a lot of people as well viewed that as co kind of an experiment to see if we could lift the content, you know? Um, Engineering. Which is interesting. But, but I, don't, I don't really see... I guess what I was trying to get at when I was saying is I don't classify Soul Wars as the content that the PvP community wanted, because I don't think it is, right? I think Soul Wars is a cool thing on the side. And to me, like, I almost wonder where the line is. Like, say we... Um, I was on a like say baby's cast. I, I pitched this idea as like an off the top of my head thing, but like, could you imagine like if there was an actual like five v five semi competitive castle wars and like we enabled relics, right? And like you could choose your relics and it would be like really like you know lift league relics in, throw it in, and it's suddenly like you know this really like competitive like PvP thing where your meta games and builds and stuff, God, that'd be awesome. and, and that sort of thing, right? That sounds that sounds awesome and like yeah, like, like that sounds like it could be a cool idea. <laughs> that's that's okay. Who wants to PK someone and get their loot, right? Is that a PvP update? Is that is that a PvP update people want? Because we can come up with PvP mini games till the cows come home, right? As the saying goes, you know, like like I think can, it's better than nothing. Keep, in general, we if you guys are that. stuck, it's like you might as well release something that is slightly interesting than um, doing nothing. Not saying you guys are doing nothing, but since we are talking about PvP, it almost seems like. We could There's do a, more. I'm not going to say we could. It's do, not right? that definitely right. And how Rakesy said that we want something fresh and exciting, but more so, I kind of just want the wilderness back, right? I mean, we used to have Edgeville, then we used to have Bounty Hunter, we used to have multi revs. These are all updates that were taken out of the game for either, like you were talking about, botting, gold selling, and what happened to old school RuneScape back in 2006, right? What were they trying to get rid of that may have been the downfall of the game? botting and gold selling and they took away free trade they brought a bunch of pvp variations didn't really end too well and i feel like we're doing the same exact thing so it's not only bringing something in new i kind of like to compare it as if pvm was pking then taking away multi revs is like taking away raids and not replacing it with anything that is comparable right uh, and it's been like that add yeah. some sense into this yeah, like, I feel like we're kind of like we're kind of like a little we're kind of like a little lost in in the translation in a way because I think we've already kind of figured out some things right like for example with the wilderness stuff it it's just kind of impossible to make it relevant just because of the way the culture of the game is currently you know set which is basically why do risky things to make money when you can do non-risky things to make more money? Right? Yeah. Right. Sure. I feel like that 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 culture, as long as it exists, the wilderness will never really properly get that level of activity that it deserves, right? Well, I just gotta add so. that um you're right. We're, we definitely need some new stuff to make people want to go in the wild, but it, the wilderness was active back when we had Bounty Hunter and back when we had Revs. Sure, there it wasn't perfect. Sure, there was gold farmers and protection worlds, and I didn't like any of that, but it was active. And you can go out there with your friends, and you can have fun. Yeah. And that's why I compare it to raids, right? What do you do with your buddies when you're bored? Bandos, raids, you know, make some money. What do you think PKers were doing on the weekends? Hey, you want to go down to yeah. Revs, crack you know, a couple beers? I feel like they could have, they probably could do something a little better with Revs, you know? Like probably well, the thing find is, they just more moderate. took it out, and then they didn't... They, single plus is great, but we're saying, like, you know how many clans were made from revs hundreds of people multiple cc's these clans still exist but there is nothing for them to actually do in the wild anymore right like what could what what is comparable to revs that we used to have now Ka callisto sure. chaos ellie not really right yeah too bad we don't have like a pvp focus jmod do we <laughs> you know because no. I don't feel like Mod Husky can really. No, really definitely, help, definitely. Help I'm just. That, you know? We start talking I about PvP. comment on it though, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Give us some insight. That's her. I would love some. Sure. So 
I love the whole PvP JMod thing, and there was that thing, tweet very recently about like how much could we raise money to get manked into the room. office, yes. and blah blah blah. That'd be great. Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> I I'm not gonna stand here and say a PvP JMod wouldn't help, but I'm also not gonna say that like there's a job role only for PvP content, right? You know, as far as content development, but like anyone could apply and it being QA, CM, anything, and like pitch ideas for PvP. I I see ideas in ideation all the time for PvP content. Um, some of them genuinely require like, you know, I've seen ideas for things that have like matchmaking ratings and systems that are queuing against each other that require engine work, right? So suddenly <laughs> there's like, okay, well, you know, like, okay, we could do it, but it would be bad. Or we could wait till we get the engine work, but then who knows where the engine work is going to be scheduled, right? Which is something as developers, content developers, we don't have like control over. We can pitch things and suggestions, but like, as far as like engine work, like, especially in the immediate term, what's more important, like getting a matchmaking written system or getting clans and like, I know this sounds like bad to say, but like group Iron Man going when they're, they're things we, it's mostly because we promise them to the community, right? Um, like, yeah. how, much do, going, how much do you know about like, kind of like the bottleneck severity of engine work you know how much do you know about that you don't work we've got yeah, more I, engine I, devs in we we have got okay. a lot more engine devs in and we, we before we used to be like have a shared engine team between like us and runescape and now we don't we have like four or five dedicated engine devs and they've put a lot into getting us clans and group iron man and it makes me excited to think that you know we've got a bunch of devs that have done a lot of stuff for us recently and what are they going to move on to next i mean there's a lot of like under the hood exciting things that are going to make life easy for us actual developers to get stuff out to you guys faster once we get those done that's also engine but i can't really talk about that too much but <laughs> i mean going back to pvp and stuff you're absolutely right i am not happy with how revs were handled because it literally was they got gutted right yeah and i think there could have been more to be done in the feedback process following that update um and I'm kind of hopeful that the wilderness blog. We've I'm got sorry a, for that. Uh, so yeah, things as is famous with us, players go when we go we go soon or in the next month or so, and then things get delayed because that's life, right? And everything gets delayed, right? You know, like if people go PvP always gets delayed, but literally everything gets delayed. So it's just like why you don't want to give release dates and stuff. But you know, that that blog is in the works. I, it includes some of the stuff. I believe it includes the stuff that I've done for equipment rebalancing in it as well, because it is really a lot less items than, you know, the range meta and blowpipe. But you know, it's obviously relevant. And I'm hopeful that some of the things that are spoken about there with revs and wildy bosses will do something to re help rejuvenate the wilderness a bit. But I think I think you guys were right. You know, um, I think it was um, Rice that said it. The problem is that, like, if you want us to go back to what we had with Bounty Hunter and Multi-Revs, that's probably doable with the right content, right? And with the right stuff in it. Going back to what people remember from the good old days, like, you know, like, you know, when we're all kids and PKing and people took, like, their 10 most valuable items into the wilderness is never going to happen because no. players are smarter now, right? <laughs> yeah. People, yeah. People legitimately go and say, I'm willing to risk 100k and that's not it. And even in PvP builds, Right, you have people like those, like you know, th there's a reason we Salad have an mall handle because people, people legitimately made like G mall kind of builds that risk like 30k. Right, that's why yeah. the ornate handle exists. So there's at least some risks, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I think that we can do more. I'm excited to see some of the ideas that even I pitched in ideation. Other people, it'd be great if they got moved forward. But games development isn't actually hard from principles right like you guys were saying oh like you just want something and it's the same thing pbm players are going for the the short end of the story is people want content it doesn't matter people just want to do stuff people want to play the game and have exciting things coming and they want to get excited about those things coming and they want to like you know it, that that is that is what a player wants They're, it's literally a uh, was it um consumer like uh like mindset just, just give us stuff and you know, if it's shit, we'll tell you it's shit and we'll, we'll hopefully get fixes <laughs> and stuff. And, you know, then hopefully we'll have more cool stuff coming. And, you know, that 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 is what it is. And I think that my vision, and I've spoken about this with some of the leadership team, and there, there's definitely, like, like an agreement that, like, this is, the, this is a cool thing to go in. But, you know, whether it actually works out in practice is another thing. But, like, I would love to go out onto RuneFest and have, like, hey, you PvPers? Here's your cool thing that we're going to promise you. There's one cool thing that you get this year, and this is what you've got to look forward to. And PVMers, here's your cool big thing, and you get this, and you're getting at least one thing this year. And it might obviously skew to, like, we might have a few more updates for one group of players and others if there's more of them, etc. And But at least everyone would have one cool thing that they can get excited about coming, right? Because I think that, like, 
I honestly think that like you should aim to serve every subsect of your community at least yep. once a year ish. I love it. If you're doing it right. And that that that's what that's how I feel. I've spoken to people internally about that. It's super idealistic, right? Because there's so much in like production and stuff. But I I think that I think that's generally like you know ha- have have a quest. God, maybe maybe have a couple of quests. Maybe have a couple of new mini games and a, a, a PvP update here or there and a new boss. And maybe every two years we have a new raid and you've got these cool exciting big things to look for. And that's just what players want. They just want new exciting content to look forward to. And you need to make sure you distribute that content. Maybe not directly evenly one for one but everyone should have something to look forward to you know know yeah. that something is in the pipeline even if it's not currently being developed that it's at least in the pipeline you know yeah i i think that's i think that's a really good idea and like we've touched on it a few times um my general opinion for it is like you know we all play the same game and it's like even if you're a pvmer and you never do pvp or you're a pvper that does solely pvp it's like if every subsection of the game has content to do that they're happy with chances are you're gonna have a more happy sort of fulfilled player base that may be more open-minded to new things and looking forward to new content um for me when it comes to pvp like to give you a background in case you didn't know I've done PvP pretty much solely since I started and only in the last few years like converted to doing PvM. Um, and as somebody who has more or less participated and played all day throughout every era of PvP, my take on it is effectively the wilderness, I love that place. It's an ancient relic. I wouldn't change it for the world. Like I, I don't want it to change. Sure, you can add things, you know, that's your own decision. But I think the things that are lacking from PvP as a whole are two things. I think that there's a very competitive nature, which is structured, which is missing. Uh, and you could argue that LMS has a, a competitive structure, and it, it does have competition. But um, you, there's no structure to it. It's so unbalanced. You fight against people if you're a new player, against somebody who's like played for 10 years plus, right? Um, and also just something which is fun, something which, does, which doesn't necessarily have to be in nature competitive, but may lead to that. And I feel like those kind of updates come in the form of mini games. And it's like, I know like you were saying, there's two different kinds of PVP, and I would completely agree that I wouldn't consider Soul Wars a PKers update. It's PVP, it's safe. Um, but I feel like the more general interest that you have in pvp whether it be a mini game or actual in wieldy content it's like is it not all amassing to more or less the same you know um i think something that would be really nice for pvp would be a very straightforward rank system whether it be some sort of coliseum something like that where you can have a one-on-one -on -one fight with somebody if you lose your first 10 fights you're then matched against people who lost their first 10 fights as well or like me in the middle somewhere like that i know rank systems are kind of complicated but um you know something along those lines would be great and um in terms of something which is fun it's like back in the day we had steel and creation okay and oh, as yeah. a pker purely doing pk and I love stealing creation. And it was because <laughs> I was able to go to a mini game and just start barraging people and it was fun. Like there was just something fun about it and you got a little reward at the end of it, which could help you doing some skilling or whatever. Um, so a concept that I thought about recently, and I don't mean to sound patronizing or a dick in any way. Um, <laughs> this is truly coming from the heart and I really do mean that. But um there's a lot of really successful PvP games that are currently out on the market. Whether you're talking about League of Legends or you're talking about some sort of FPS, uh, a game I've been playing a lot recently is Escape from Tarkov, if you're familiar with that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I think some of the concepts, and I don't know if there's like a copyright issue here, but some of the concepts that those games have, I think in a lot of ways could fit into the game that we have. Um, just in its own RuneScape style. Uh, so like with Escape from Tarkov, if you are familiar with how that game works, it's like we could effectively have a mini game for the wilderness, which is called, and you know, you don't have the name of this, but it could be like Escape from Wilderness. That'd be the theme where you go into a lobby, you have like a, a loadout that you get to select. Um, 
you spawn in in the wilderness and like say you spawn in at like rune rocks and it's like you need to get down to like east dragons that's where you escape to if you manage to get there without dying you keep all the stuff you went in with and so forth and it wouldn't necessarily have to be something which is gruelingly punishing to the player where it's like you take your own gear in like you're given effectively like an old set that is useless outside of that mini game but you can actually make progression within that mini game and just enjoy the concepts of PVP. And that can be taken to any com competitive heights as you would like to. Um, and like touching back on the whole Deadman mode, I love Deadman mode too. I, I think there should be updates which happen which are almost like random events like that, which are just fun for those players. But there should also be sustainable long-term content in the actual game itself because I personally don't think that Deadman mode is a solution to fix in PvP. I think it's more of like a band-aid, but it's also something which is really nice, you know? It's um, seasonal, you know? It's a seasonal Something thing. seasonal. I don't know. It, it's really disheartening, man, because, you know, I love what you guys do, and it's really frustrating for me because, you know, whenever, like, PvP comes up, I know you guys have a super busy schedule. Is there any realistic way where like you guys could just focus on like doing something for pvp like is that reality ever gonna become true or is it just always gonna be like a stringed out thing because that's kind of how it feels i mean and sorry for the hard-hitting question no it's cool as far as like preaching to the choir in like everything you said there i think that like lms has proven completely that give people a loadout and stats and make it safe works as like a fun just go in i'm on an even playing field i have some fun i kill some people i get some i get some rewards from so even just like you like it could be an mmr and a rank and i think that that i think some sort of mmr rank system would be super healthy for the pvp community it's it's gonna be plagued with issues right you're gonna have people like in other games that like sell services if it's especially like 2v2 3v3 or whatever right that sort of thing to like get to certain stuff you know you're gonna have people smurfing but the idea that i could be placed against someone theoretically at the same level as me in roughly the same gear as me and we duke it out to see who's better and if i win i now move on and increase my rank it's super cool because you've even then got lms as like a proving training grounds right you know where you're like hey I'm, I'm pretty bad at this but i can practice my hybrid stuff in in lms right you know and that sort of thing right yeah. um I, I i think it works I, I think it could work really well in terms of like Will it ever get scheduled? I, I, I hate to give you the cop out answer here, but like <laughs> it almost feels like I don't really have that much say in terms of what actually gets scheduled and stuff, right? It, in terms of like myself, it's like I have my ideation. I can submit ideas to the team and get them in the in the backlog. And there are teams that review all that, and those teams, you know, uh, decide what actually gets scheduled, what doesn't, what's. What is a great idea we're going to do now? A good idea we're going to do later? An idea that just needs to be refined and worked on, right? And ultimately, anytime you're you're fighting against a pool of ideas, and there's a bunch of PvP ideas in there, I'd I'd like to hope that we could get some solid, good, awesome PvP updates. You know, especially once we get some of the engine work to do them out. But in terms of like what like I could do, like personally, it's really hard because. Like, like I kind of said before, I have like my projects, right, that I've been assigned to do, and I'm I'm part of the Juggernauts team, and you guys are gonna work on uh, you guys are gonna work on clans and equipment rebalancing and um, what's the other one? Uh, combat achievements and other stuff that I can't talk about, right? So I already know what I've got coming up, and then later on, like someone else, someone's gonna come along and be like, hey, we're gonna add this this job to the to the to the juggernauts and stuff and and obviously we get some say in the projects that we do go you know i can say to people like hey you know that like i i could say for example i'd really like to work on leagues three because i really enjoy working in the first two and that'll be considered but for the most part like the work is generally dictated and it's generally assigned to teams that make sense so What's as far as like who do we have uh, to get on here <laughs> well, that's the problem though it's it's a team of people and there's absolutely a, a thing where it's like um it's not a team of people. It's not they're your enemy. It's literally just like, it's kind of what was said earlier, where the commercial impact of a PvP update is a genuine thing. You guys said like, should you commit six, like it doesn't have to be six months. I'm using it as an exaggeration, right? Where it's like of dev resource to an update that is for like two to 5% of the community, yeah. right? 
and that that's a genuine thing because there is the business side of it now there is a balancing act there right it's not always about picking the update that makes the most money because if that was a thing then theater of blood wouldn't exist theater of blood was if you look at the high scores it's like ballpark twenty thousand people have done like 50 theater of blood right that's that's not that many people especially compared to like chambers of zarek right you know so there is a balance between this is an update that isn't going to make us money, but it's going to make our players happy and it's going to help us keep members by having content for them, right? And it's that balance between updates that are focused on making money versus updates that are um, that are purely for attention. Like, like Leagues is a phenomenal example of like, that update is literally there. Like it, it will make money, right? It'll get people making new accounts. It'll get people back to the game and excited and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. You know, and obviously like there's updates like it, it's all in the balance like you guys don't see things that we try and do for like the new player experience right like those are really important things because our new player experience really sucks right yeah, I've you know, seen you that say, like, yeah i saw Gold playing through tutorial island yeah <laughs> <laughs> like the, the fact is that like as a kid you get dropped in a world and you don't know where to go was exciting and as as someone who as a, as a new player in this day and age it's like oh Okay, I don't know. It's what to insulting, do. Sure. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, like, yeah. Okay, we have problems. So, I, I'm kind of talking about like all the bigger things we have going up. I, I, I don't know is the yeah. answer, right? Like, I there are okay. people, there are people internally who push and fight for all kinds of updates, and those include PvP updates, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that we will work on stuff. I mean, th because those people fight is why we've got a blog talking about wilderness changes in the works and about to come out. And that is a project that has been allocated time to be worked on. Nice. Right? Awesome. Yeah, I actually so, uh, so wanted it to... Does, it does... It... No, you can continue. Say, it I... does happen. My brain. It's just... It, it, it does happen. It's just that I think right now, it, it, those people in PvP communities are just not getting the quantity and sometimes even the quality of updates that they, they really want right and i'm really hopeful that like we're just gonna have to continue and improve and even internally we like you guys don't see it a lot but we will turn around and go hey like we'd really drop the ball on that right we really need to do better we really need to make sure we don't make this same mistake next time you know we can't come pub sometimes we do come publicly with our mistakes but it's not like you know i can come out and like trash an update somebody did because that's just that's not fair i don't want someone to do that to my update either right you know like they're yeah. I think there are a lot of people who do their best, and with PvP, it's really easy to miss the mark. Right? Yeah, whoever made the and bulwark, I wish that I'm those sorry. <laughs> but, and the people, who, the people who didn't, who had missed the mark, often don't get the time to correct it, right? Because sometimes we're just moving on to the next project, and that's something that, you know, I'm heavily critical of sometimes internally, that, like, sometimes you need to spend a bit of time, like, still working on it, and we're getting better at that, too. It's just... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I can, really if I can sometimes. quickly add on a, a very, very brief, uh, quick question regarding what we just spoke about. So content actually coming into the game. So for anyone who's watching this that doesn't know, uh, we briefly touched on it earlier. Manked Up Mage recently posted saying uh, we were he was trying to do like a crowdfunding to basically get a year salary for him to work at Jagex for solely PvP, which we've briefly touched on. Um, so. In your opinion, if that were to actually happen, what we touched on earlier about um, one of the J mods had already developed in his spare time the new uh, the Nightmare Ashy Hammer update, the hard mode. Theoretically, if that kind of thing were to say happen with Manked, uh, because like let's be honest, if he did get that position with how passionate the guy is about PvP, I'm sure he'd be working you know after hours to get an idea to come forward with. If that were to realistically happen and he was employed by Jagex and he came to you guys like, hey, this is an idea that I've worked on in my own time, what are the chances of that being developed when there's already been that head start on that piece of content? Um, it, you can be a, as honest, a, honest as possible. <laughs> It's a really difficult. It's a really difficult one, right? Because if something comes out of ideation and it doesn't have much left to do, and it's a solid idea, that absolutely helps, right? Would employing manked up mage work, the like in theory, it would produce some pretty good ideas, right? Like you know, assuming all his ideas were great, right? Do you know what I mean? Like he's still not 
likely to be a developer. I don't I don't think he can code. I could be wrong there, right? So if he's not, then obviously those great ideas need to be allocated time to a developer to do. And then there's QA that need to test it. And then there's marketing for it. And then there's production. Like There's more to it than just one person to do all the work and like employ Manx up Mage and he'll single-handedly like get us all the PvP updates we need. It's it's not even, it's, it's nowhere near that, right? Because like the other projects are still fighting for resource as well. Like, you know, to get editorial, to write the blogs and the QA team to test it and stuff. And no matter what, like, like sometimes like these no update weeks that we've had, like people go, Oh, could you not even sneak in something in the poll? It's like, no, all the QA staff are working on clans, right? The the update that the, the poll 75 stuff might be dev ready, but it's not QA ready. So, you know, you end up saying like, okay, we'll say like, we want to give Manked his own team just to get like PVP updates into the game. It's like, okay, well, let's get Manked and he's the vision holder and designer. Let's also get him a dev. He needs at least one dev. We'll give him one. Uh, we're gonna have it give, give him a QA or maybe we'll give him some QA resource only when like I think people are ready and then like you know maybe there's like a CM to write his blogs or something like that and suddenly it's become like four people right in just the bare yeah. basics and that's why that sort of stuff doesn't work but I see that doesn't that doesn't mean that like like, like theoretically Manx could get a job as like uh say he wanted to be like a community manager right now the downside is you would never get a community manager that like signs a contract to say this person only works on uh pvp work it's you know the community manager role as a whole does that but that doesn't mean that manx couldn't you know then work with developers in like spare time to like come up with good ideas and then present them to the community and because you know he really knows the the the, the content really well and the scene it'll have a he, like, you know what i mean like his when you present it to the players, it's more likely to be successful potentially. Like, because that's never even a guarantee, right? Because even people who know the content can have bad ideas. Hell, I've had terrible PVM ideas, and I think I know PVM, right? Um, so it, it's complicated, is the honest answer. I, I don't, it, and I don't think it's ever a case of like, you know, Jagex are just not paying the money to do it, right? Yeah. You know, and there's also elements of, I'm not even sure 20k would be enough to really cover someone for a yeah. year. You know, that, that, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's not. <laughs> but God, you know. it, or, or, listen, man, I just have to ask you. Like, I, I know a lot of these questions. Obviously, like you can't give us the answer to because you honestly don't know the answer to. Um, would Mod Sween be a good person to try and poach onto the podcast? Would he have more? like of you know what do you have more information regarding who gets to work on what and when kind of thing or is there a specific jmod that deals with that or is it like the real higher ups in the company so god i, I don't i don't ever want to be like i'm giving you the name of the person to go bother to get like the things that you might want or like an agenda through because that's not like anything i ever want to do because we are like a team right do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's fair and, enough. And I think that to answer the question generally, if you got Mod Sween on the podcast, first of all, he would be probably more comfortable in knowing exactly what he could say. <laughs> it's quite literally his job in community management. Uh, also, like, if if you've seen, like, we have, like, leadership Q&As every month. Him, uh, Kieran, and Mod, Mod Mike D tend to be on it. You know, they're they're part of the leadership team. So if anyone can speak more to production and scheduling those people absolutely would be more knowledgeable to speak to that than than i can right because even i sometimes give feedback internally and say hey i had a pretty cool idea um i mean it'd be nice to get some feedback like is it actually being selected is it just in the backlog you know we're working on those feedback routes internally because even as a developer i want to know was my idea rubbish or is it being selected or is it you know is it doesn't need worked on or whatever right and you know, so I don't have full information of all that stuff because that and that's something that, you know, we need to get better at, like I say, internally because, you know, and that's things we're all aware of. So, yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to say like, you know, Mod Sween is not the person that you just go break questions. And as soon as Mod Sween agrees, yep, OK, Mod Sween, give you all clear. We're now we're now going to work on PvP content. It doesn't work like that. Right. Because there's a team of leads <laughs> that for yeah. lots of I reasons decide the content that goes in the game, whether it's. And I, I don't know if you listen to leadership live streams. Mike D is is actually great. He's a MMO veteran and, and and knows a lot of stuff. And he has frequently said that an MMO is only as good as its individual parts. Is and that Mike means that you the, have... Is he the guy that worked at Riot Games before? Is that Mike uh, or is that somebody else? 
I don't think he worked at uh, Riot Games, but he's the he's the like um, he's the American guy that's always uh, on our leadership Q and A's. Um, he uh, I can't remember exactly what his job role is called, and I'll probably botch it anyway. But um, he he is the guy in the leadership team that like tries to represent the player, if that makes sense. Okay. And he and he very much is under, understands that like, and as he said himself that like, if you have the best um, PVM scene and you have the best this scene, but this thing is trash, then your game is still trash, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because you need to as an MMO is is all these interworking bits and he loves he loves the analogy that like you know you might have the people who are out there in the front lines raiding and you might have the people who are doing this but you know the guy who's just crafting items for all these guys to do all their stuff and obviously we don't have the same crafting system that other MMOs have but the, the idea there if he's not getting something he's excited about then you know he's just going to quit and then when all your crafts people quit then that has a knock on effect on the entire game right yeah you know yeah. so he he speaks about that stuff a lot that like an MMO is like all these Cogs in a machine, you know, all have their own individual thing, and and peak gears do as well, right? You know, yeah. I mean, we're definitely, if there yeah, are no, got, I'm trying to think of the word to describe PVPers like that. Um, food chain, right? Different food chains in the <laughs> wilderness. That's how I like to say it. Okay, so let's say that P, we, PVP is disabled for the sake of like, you know, <laughs> probably never get to a point where there's no peak gears, right? Um, <laughs> what would happen, right? The, the price of like literally everything from wildy bosses would crash, right? Like black chins would crash and all this stuff, and like they're literally a barrier to getting some resources in the game, right? That like, and the, but then because those items are valuable, PVMers love doing that content, you know, and they make get excited when they see like a, what I don't know what it is now, dragon pick like, four maybe, and it's been crashing lately, so I might have an idea. I remember like four. To it's six, still four mil. But you get the idea, right? Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Bring it to God. Pretty right much now. is like the best wilderness item I'd say. By the way, uh, Husky, I would just like to. Are- I don't know what the word is. I just like to say I'm sorry for such a hard hitting question. It's just no, no. It, it's, it's things that are generally <laughs> fuss. Like it's frustrating to you know, and it's not me being frustrated to you. It's just I wish I understood better like the process in which things come into the game, and I really value the information that you're giving to us on this. Seriously, yeah, it's great. It's okay, and yeah, it's actually. And I think, like, lot... by the way, oh yeah, go on. No, on you go. I'll, I'll okay, so I was saying, I was like, it's actually, you know, very complicated because it's more of a teamwork thing than just one guy saying something and doing something, you know, because they all, you guys rely on, uh, you know, at least sounds like three or four more people just to make one vision happen, right? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot, of, a lot of the frustration is with this whole PvP stuff is the fact that people think they know how to fix it, but they don't realize just the obstacles that requires just to set one, one thing in motion, you know, which involves like a domino effect of at least four or five people, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. It's really- and then for me, it leads to like I, yeah. I want to know more about that process and how to like quicken it up, you know, make it make it sort of those dominoes fall a little bit faster in order to get that ball rolling. I think pl- players always want that, and I think the. I think there is something to be said for the schedule for 2021 not being as it, it goes beyond that. It's 2020 and 2021 hasn't hit as well as it could have. Um, COVID. I hate being like, oh my god, someone in the games industry oh, using the COVID yeah. excuse, haha. <laughs> but it, it genuinely matters, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't. I think. I think <clears throat> Group Iron Man was always an optimistic guess for 2020. I would have thought Group. If you'd asked me, like. You know, back before COVID had started, would Group Iron Man be out by now? And clans, I would say, yeah, they would have been out by now, right? It slowed down everything. So when you realize that, you're like, okay, we've still got all these promises from that Rune Fest that happened before COVID that we haven't delivered on because things got slower, right? Like things really slowed down. And what that means is we're now delivering those, but re- meanwhile, players are like, oh, well, we we we're still waiting for this content that we haven't done, and because all the engine work got delayed for for clans. It was like, well, we have a bunch of developers. Let's let's put them on like fishing skill boss, and then you get the idea where people are like, nobody. I, I don't think many people think fishing skill boss is a bad update. I think a lot of people genuinely no. thought it seemed <laughs> quite good once they got into it. The problem wasn't that the content was bad; it was that it was the content nobody wanted. Right? Yes, it's kind of true. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. <laughs> yeah, so, pretty much. I, I, I think it's phenomenal, and even as a developer, I look at the little things like the little, there's 
almost like this is like nerding out valve or stuff you can click almost anything in there and there's a nice little cool sound effect right i know not many people play with sounds it's like it's really high quality and the animations are great and it's just that right level between chill and excited to get the rewards there's a lot of design elements that made that wet, a good update and i think combat achievements when it comes out is going to be amazing but that doesn't help the fact that the community now have a mindset of oh it's been two and a half years since the last raid and we can't suddenly uproot all the plans that we planned like you know six months ago and we're when i saw things that are here is our 2021 roadmap roughly what we're doing in the first like four months are, we're pretty confident about it. and then the further out you get you know the, the less confident we're getting and more you know we could potentially change that you know the truth is that the content beats we had just didn't hit right you know people have had content i think it's it's actually people are kind of it's a bit ridiculous people say we haven't had any content like we actually have had a lot of content it's just not the content that they've wanted right yeah yeah um and i think that that's on us to say yep this roadmap could have been better and i I, i'm looking at myself and saying god could i have looked back at myself like you know all these months ago and given the feedback back then that would have changed it now to be better i don't i don't know right but i think there is something to be said for the cadence of of types of updates are important right you know i don't think anybody actually thinks combat achievements is going to be a bad update it's it's just that they want new up new PBM content, not to redo mm. the same PBM content they've done before, exactly. which is what they're currently been doing and have been doing for the last year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're yep. already in a phase of repeating PBM content. So now we come up with an update that makes them repeat more PBM content. You know, so... yeah, and I mean, I I think COVID does have quite a bearing on that as well because it's probably sped up uh, players' general progression through the game because. Mm-hmm. Instead of going out in the evening with your mates to go to the pub, people have stayed in and played RuneScape. So people have just excelled when you guys at Jagex, like, I don't know how many of you guys are still working from home, but like, I, I, I can take a guess that there's things that take longer to get done when you're not face to face with people in the office, when you have to send emails to people and so forth and like get verifications that way instead of just doing it almost instantly. I imagine it takes uh, a fair bit of time. Um, a question I have, I think we would be doing our our community a, a disservice if we didn't ask, because it's a super, super like controversial thing right now that everybody's talking about. What is your take and Jagex's take currently regarding the economy in the game? Because we've all seen it, the prices of pretty much at this point, they're, they're plummeted down. A Fury's about a mil now. Um, and we've spoken about potential item syncs with the Grand Exchange and so forth. And I was wondering if, firstly, you thought it was, if you guys think that it's an issue that needs to be solved, or whether this is just a generic thing which is just going to work itself out over time. So it's it's been an issue, and it's become a more prevalent issue of late, where like people suddenly have become super aware of it, right? Um, because like it's just been a top of discussion and what that means is kind of like as i mentioned before like it's really hard to suddenly uproot all plans to fix a problem immediately but it's kind of a side effect i think of multiple things i i i kind of address this in a qa as my speculation as to why the problem exists um i mean the, the first one is some items like a fury there's just too many things with onyx and chaos runes and like mithril ore on the drop table right like fact we could probably reduce that that would be yeah. like but you know that sort of thing but that doesn't fix every... That one has a clear solution that we could just do if we had the time and if we pitched the community and it was the right thing and we had the time available to do the communications and blah, 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 right? But some of them are way harder, right? How do you fix a deck scrolls price, right? Or an yeah. arcane, <laughs> right? There isn't really a clear solution. The problem started five years ago when the community complained about deck scrolls being super rare and everyone wants one and it's such a key upgrade and nobody wants to spend like 100 mil on like an arcane scroll when it's not that great of an upgrade. I mean, I I wasn't working for the team at the time and I think that more people on the team go, yeah, we probably shouldn't have made them as common as we did, like in hindsight. And But again, that's one item. There's so many items that people list, right, that have problems. And it's kind of a multi-part problem. The first one is COVID happened, right? I, I just let's say COVID, but for different reasons, a bunch of people come into the game, a bunch of people do content and get these items in the game because they're doing content. And they also have a demand for the for, for the items because they're needing it to do content. What happens when those people leave? Well, when those people start leaving because, you know, the world's reopening, going back to normal, they leave all the items they got while they were there, 
right? Uh, in the game. Those items still exist. They haven't deleted themselves. But there's less demand for them because there's now less people playing the game, right? And people have sold all their items because, oh, I'm going to go back to work and I'm going to take a break from the game because I'm now burned out because I played hard over COVID. Um, so now I'm going to, like, um, I'm going to wait, liquidate, liquid, um, liquidate, yeah, liquidate, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I'm going to save it for when I come back. So now a bunch of people are doing that. And of course, like the Twisted Bow literally only dipped below one bill because. Like or it, it got below bill, and then people panic because it was less than a bill. It went down to like almost nine hundred mil because that's what happens, right? Because people crap panic sell and stuff. Well, just like the LEA. But <laughs> generally, I think that's the problem with a lot of items in the game, right? You know, there was so many of them, and there's now less demand for them. And that less demand for them is only increased by the lack of like content that needs them, right? Like if we'd been releasing like, um, you know, say say there say like um. Three or four months ago, we'd released a blog saying we're going to do raids three, and we're not telling you what it is, but we're you know we're we're pulling the rewards from it right now, and there's all this speculation about like oh my god like what items are people going to need? Is Twisted Bow going to be good? Is Scythe going to be good? Is um oh my god like w w are, are Sangs going to be good? Are there going to be bosses weak to magic? Oh like look let's look at the rewards and speculate. That generates the interest for people wanting to these items right, and you need that, and you know obviously we haven't had that and. The problem is that like Theater of Blood, like and Fazani's Nightmare are never gonna do that because unless we drastically change the defenses of the creature, which we might have, we might not, I can't say. It you can never like get the same thing. Like it's the we literally announced like top hard mode release date today. And the, and the price of a scythe is up like a hundred mil at least, right? If not more. Yes. <laughs> so <Sweet. laughs> this is what spec this is what content like does in speculation and stuff, and we need to do more of that. I think I think I think it was good. Uh, I tried to hype up hard mode on Twitter as much as I could because I am genuinely excited for it and I knew the community weren't, you know? Um, just because I think that, like, it comes down to we want new stuff. And the truth is, well, if you want new stuff, it's going to take months to develop. And here's something we can do in, like, a few weeks as, like, an interim, right? Yeah. Um, I hope okay. that there is more long-term solutions that we can come up with if we have more time. As I said, there could be nothing intermediate. I heard a super cool idea from Ash, though, that, like, might work. It might be terrible. But, you know, the idea where you could theoretically add a GE tax in gold, but then hey, use, a use a percentage of that to, like, buy items from players. Yeah. And you just delete them from the game. We covered that last episode. Hey, so, look at that. That might have actually came from Mod Ash, though, completely. So, we might have just Well, I think it. that came from a player, and Mod Ash was, th was ah. talking about it, and he was like, God, it would be really hard to do, and we couldn't do it for every item globally without engine support. But maybe we could just target some items to like remove a bunch of them from the game, right? That'd be perfect. Yeah. Fury, so, anything high cost. Maybe? Yeah. Great. That'd yeah. be great. Onyxes. Oh, man. That's perfect. Yeah, we just hit about two hours in the podcast, though. Um, <laughs> and Rice typed, we should probably do a round two in the future so we can cover even more. But uh, I, I, oh, I'd say we definitely should, man. Holy crap. So if you guys want a round like two, I'd stare for uh -huh. another two hours. <laughs> right. I, I, I just Rice love talking about a good the game. Time. Who doesn't? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's great. And that's what we want to see in a J mod, right? Passion and yeah, there's a, a lot, lot of mindfulness stuff that, that we could have gone over. But obviously, there's just not enough time to do it all in one go. So there's, you know, I'm we'll always have down to, for We'll more. have to do a round two. Like, <laughs> if you're down, Husky, if the questions haven't been too hard, we would love to have you on again, man. That'd be amazing. <laughs> and um, because, to I, be fair, though, this this podcast, you were asked questions that were not really your specialties. So maybe next next one we could talk about more about the things that you do, you know, that you're more focused <laughs> on, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's cool. And I hope hopefully next time, you know, equipment rebalancing will be out and we could talk about that or like oh, a dead yeah. man design is maybe out there and it's in progress that would be awesome i mean so don't good. get me wrong we don't we don't need to wait for that stuff for you guys to get feedback on that i mean uh, assuming the dead man design goes ahead which i don't see why it wouldn't at least get presented to the community i mean i'm gonna be looking anywhere and everywhere for feedback you you better believe it right you know <laughs> I'm, I'm not a pvp expert so i'm looking forward to people pointing out issues some i probably have already thought of some i probably haven't you know and you know that, that that's what makes this game great you know sounds me, great oh, sounds yeah. like a great time man um we will go ahead and put your socials down below because you're very active on twitter and uh yeah thanks for having thanks for coming on Mod husky it was an amazing podcast yeah we'll try to get around to soon to be honest yes sir <laughs>
No problem. Ah, boys. I, I just hope I didn't consume too much of the conversation. I, I know oh, I no, so fine. Oh, so you're, you're, you're the star <laughs> of the podcast. So, we don't yeah. want to hear us and speak, man. Yeah. Dude, on, honestly, I know that some of the questions, like, probably were a bit hard hit and in some ways, but, like, I really appreciate you coming on, man. I really appreciate you taking your time. And it's like half half 11 UK GMT time yeah. here. So, dude, you're up late to come on the podcast, man. I really appreciate that, dude. This is huge. Yo, yo. Oh, it's, it's cool. And you like this video because <laughs> this man stayed up late. <laughs> he just was like, wait, what's that? Double like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know? e every like on the video makes makes like raids three come like yes, you know, yes. sooner. Husky, yeah. how many <laughs> likes for raids three to come out in a month's time? Give us a like goal. <sighs> like at least a thousand. No, I I'm joking. Like <laughs> no, 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 we're gonna cut it off right here. Video was a thousand likes for raids <laughs> three next month. Let's go.